Canes remain in the national championship chase. That Big East Conference win, like so many others this year, turned two on the sensational play of tackle Warren Sapp, who along with linebacker Ray Lewis, anchor one of the finest defensive units ever to wear the Cane colors. Today in Miami, a college football legend in Johnny Majors readies to send rebuilding Pittsburgh onto the field. And like his Panther club of nearly 20 years ago that won it all with Tony Dorsett carrying the ball, number 20 and sophomore Billy West leads the Big East in rushing as Pitt charges into the Orange Bowl and on the Sunshine Network. Sunshine Network proudly presents the University of Miami Hurricane Football. The historic Orange Bowl in warm and blustery Miami, our setting for this Big East matchup. The Canes today celebrating homecoming in South Florida and hosting a Panther team that's fully aware of the long odds it faces today in challenging one of college football's elite. Good to have you with us. Along with that, more. I'm Paul Kennedy. Welcome to Miami. Uh, the Canes currently at seven and zero overall, or seven and one overall, four and zero in the Big East Conference. And here is Pitt coming off its first league win of the year. They had their way with Temple two weeks ago. Arrive here now at two and seven. Uh, Nat, if you are a Cane fan, though, Miami's playing this one for the national polls, for the national championship chase. Well, Miami's in great position. They control their own destiny. If they win from here on in, they get to play. Nebraska at the end of the year back here in the Orange Bowl for the number one ranking. Both Nebraska and Penn State heavily favored today are the Cornhuskers taking on Iowa State, Penn State facing Illinois. Uh, what is this? Miami, known for its Heisman Trophy quarterback tradition, has gone to a ground assault. And it's James Stewart coming off a 100-yard rushing performance a week ago in a victory over Syracuse. Well, when you have a big fullback like James Stewart that's 245 pounds that can run over people as well as run around them, you've got to give him the football. And he's the reason that they've had this great running attack. The Kane defense was strong, too, in the win over the Orangemen, and C.J. Richardson, the free safety, voted the Big East Conference Defensive Player of the Week. Yeah, he had 15 tackles last week, but, you know, he's noted more for the big hit. You know, he's a guy that reads the quarterback eyes and reacts up and will really put the stick on the receiver. For Pittsburgh and that Panther offense, pretty good unit, and uh, Billy West is known for his rushing the football. In fact, he leads the conference with better than a thousand yards. Well, he's a good one. He's a no-nonsense type running back. He goes north and south, none of that east and west stuff. And, you know, that's why the Pitt team has been able to score as many points as they have. Uh, for Pitt to stay in this football game, let's be honest, they're going to need some big plays. Perhaps linebacker Tom Tomalty will make those. He's been a fine linebacker for about three years. Well, Tom Tomalty is coming off a knee injury, and it's great to have him back. You know, he had a great ball game last year against the uh, Hurricanes with 14 tackles, 10 of them were solo, but you know, he's going to meet Mr. Stewart today. Our sideline reporter today, a Joe Rose, who moments ago talked to both head coaches. Let's get the mood on the sideline and welcome aboard Joe. Paul, Johnny Majors before the game, very impressed with the team speed of this University of Miami football team on both sides of the football. Talking to Dennis Erickson, he's more concerned with a coalition poll. He doesn't want to do anything that might mess it up. They're heavy favorites today, and he wants a chance to play in the Orange Bowl come the first of the year. Back to you guys. All right, Joe, thanks. As you can see, there's some rain in the distance. We've had drops fall already today. Pittsburgh and Miami, our kickoff just ahead on Sunshine Network. Billions of years ago, the only place to get a nice gift was the airport. A good meal, the airport. Rent a wheel, the airport. That's why Thrifty Car Rental opened in your neighborhood. Today in Orlando, you can rent the luxurious Dodge Intrepid for only $29.95 per day when you mention Rate Plan SN. And if you're at the airport, we're in that neighborhood too. Your neighborhood Thrifty Car Rental, historically known for low rates. Hi, I'm Dennis Erickson of the University of Miami. I'm Norm Tripp from Alamo Rent-A-Car. Join us for a day of golf at Arvidas Weston Hills Golf and Country Club in the second annual Alamo Golf Classic. Alamo Rent-A-Car is committed to educational endeavors in South Florida and is proud to sponsor this event. 
and all benefits go to the University of Miami Athletic Scholarship Fund. We'll tee off at 12.30 on Monday, January 23rd. Hope, Hope to see you there. Don't let a new car payment be a financial burden. Get Smart Lease by GMAC. It just might give you something you wouldn't mind carrying around. Don't let a new truck payment stretch you to the limit. Get Smart Lease by GMAC. It keeps new vehicles well within reach. We are set for football this afternoon as the Miami Hurricanes, who arrived here looking to extend a five-game winning streak that has carried them to 7-1 and one, and remain in contention for what would be their fifth national championship, take on the decidedly underdog Pittsburgh Panthers. The fine return team, number seven to the left of your screen, and Jamie German, the sophomore wide receiver, along with Al Shipman, who can really scoot Where's number 32? There he is. Set the field. This kickoff from Todd Barton of Pittsburgh. David Merrick is the uh, placement specialist. We'll see him today. And Barton handles the kickoff, George. Pitt on the road. They have yet to win a road game. A little chop kick. And a fair catch called for and made. Miami will uh, get the football. And excellent field position as the fair catch is made by Marlon Burns. And Frank Costa, of course, at the helm today after directing Miami to the win over Syracuse a week ago. James Stewart coming off the big game, and Chris T. Jones along with German, the top two targets there, and the front line considered to be one of the finest that Miami has ever produced. And Lomelski, who is playing on a bum ankle, and Robert Woodis today gets the start, his very first collegiate starting assignment. Ricky Perry, normally the strong side tackle, is out with an ankle problem. First snap of the afternoon for Miami from its 42 play action. Costa, where's that ground game? He's going upstairs for German, and it's batted away incomplete. DeNorse Mosley, a fine cornerback, wasn't fooled on the play action, and he was right with German. Had a little, uh, had a little uh, bump and run there where they ran into each other, but uh, Mosley did a good job of regaining his balance and playing the ball in the air. Uh, good uh, execution by the DB there. You're surprised, Matt, that that would be the call after all this talk of a ground game? Yeah, let's go back and take a good, a good look at that as you see Mosley just swatting it away as Jamie German went up for the reception, but... Uh, you know, Miami wants to throw the football, and then they want to be able to run it. they got to get balance back into the attack. On second down, Costa again, a second time, and he overshoots his tight end, and it's picked off. It is. Pitt has the football. It is Mosley with the interception. Mosley with his fifth interception of the year for a team now that has made only 10 all season. What a surprise. This is just a bad throw by uh, Costa. You know, the ball's in over in, and you see Mosley comes in, makes a good uh, reception of the ball there, but you know, this is what Miami cannot afford to do is to give Pitt a chance to think they can win this football game. Well, while uh, Costa goes to the sideline, John Ryan and the Panther offense take over. Like Miami, they start close to their own 42-yard line. And it is West showing us his stuff a yard shy of midfield. James Merchants, fine linebacker who made a dozen stops last week against Syracuse, makes the first tackle here. Nice hole on the left side as well, Matt, for West. Yeah, good blocking by the uh, left side uh, at the point of attack to get West into the secondary. Pitt with three. Receivers set in the pattern out of the eye after the gain of eight, second and a pair facing the Panthers. And here is West. First down and more. Across midfield inside the 45. He's down to the 41-yard line. So it is Pitt effective offensively as John Ryan in only his third starting assignment of the year and coming off a four touchdown performance and a win over Temple directs the assault today for the Panthers their running back core 
Del Seagraves, their tight end, a former defensive lineman, and the offensive line anchored on the left side by Reuben Brown, number 78, one of the best linemen in the college game. Uh, he's in the top three, or expected to go into top three in the draft for offensive linemen, and you're seeing why here today. Third snap. And a first down for the Panthers. Why not West again? This time it's a little tougher off the left side. And still the Panthers manage to grind it down to the uh, 38 and gain a period. Okay, a look at one of the best defensive clubs ever for Miami. Lang, Sapp, who may be the best football player in America, bar none. Riley, who doesn't get a lot of attention, but he can really play. Along with Holmes, there's Burgess, Ray Lewis, and Francis Jones, Richardson, the Big East Player of the Week, Pearson. And Wilson playing for that man, Greg McMackett, the defensive coordinator of the game. Second down. Ryan may be calling this play at the line of scrimmage. Miami shows blitz. Do they bring five? Yes, they do. Quick catch out to the flat. That is caught to the 30-yard line. And down he goes. Billy Davis, the top target for the Panthers this year. The senior makes his first catch of the day. The second first down of the afternoon. The first reception of the afternoon. For yeah, just a basic screen pass out to West and giving him a chance to run with the football. And, you know, Malcolm Pearson need to come down with that uh, tackle to keep him from getting the first down. You have to be impressed so far with this pit offense. They move the ball 25 yards. Flawlessly does for it. Pitt has not beaten Miami in the last five meetings between these two clubs. First down inside the 30-yard line. Ryan to West. And West with those legs churning. Drives the ball inside the 25. Uh, the Miami coaching staff was impressed with his brute strength. He showed it there against that Miami front wall. Tuan Russell, the linebacker, on the stop for the Kings. The Pitt offensive line is just doing a good job of coming off the ball, moving that Miami's defensive line back off the ball. And, uh, you know, that's why they're able to gain four and five yards of crack. And his 27th season as a head coach, Johnny Majors in his second go-round with the Panthers. Hunting what would be a monumental upset. West stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Warren Sapp, Kenny Holmes, a couple of pretty good linemen there. Holmes the left end at 240, and there you see Sapp, the All-American. Let's take another look at this play. As you see Warren Sapp uh, over the center's nose, as he comes around, does a good job fighting off the double team and coming up with the uh, tackle there. Now, that's why Warren Sapp is rated as the best defensive lineman in college football today. His ability to split the double team. Third and five, full house set. Straight ahead, West. West to the 20 and no more. That leaves him about a yard and a half shot of the first down. Ray Lewis, the inside linebacker, one of a number of orange jerseys. And on the stop, and so the field goal unit will come on and try and cap this opening drive that all began off of Frank Costa interception when he was picked off at the pit. 41 by DeNorris Mosley. Now, David Merrick is an outstanding field goal kicker. This will be a 37-yard try, and he's hit 8 of 11 this year inside 40 yards. Out of Ryan's hold with a senior to kick it from 37. It's away with distance, and he drills it. So this score will be a surprise early as it's announced coast to coast. Underman Pittsburgh draws first blood and leads the game 3 nothing. More after this, of course, like the Silver Bullet. Today's Miami Hurricane football game has been brought to you by your local Florida Jeep and Eagle dealer. By Coors Light. Reach for Coors Light, the silver bullet, and keep on moving. And by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. When you're thirsty, it's got to be Gatorade. It's time for the Great Play of the Week, brought to you by GMAC Financial Services, the expressway home. It's early second quarter, SMU versus UCLA, when quarterback Ramon Flanagan shovels this pass to Jacques Smith. 
Smith finds a hole and shakes it loose for a 62-yard scamper before he's brought down. It's first and goal Mustangs on the UCLA four-yard line. This great play of the week has been brought to you by GMAC Financial Services. The Expressway Home. The top-ranked Miami Hurricanes are on their way to another season of victory. Don't miss a single play. Call your local cable operator and catch all the excitement live on pay-per-view. Saturday, November 19th, travel with the Hurricanes for a Big East showdown with the Temple University Owls. The action kicks off in one as the Owls hope to finish up their season by stopping the Hurricanes. It's available live only on pay-per-view. Call your local cable operator today. The most valuable thing we can give our children is good health. And good health starts with immunization against childhood diseases that can maim or even kill them. I urge you to have your children immunized against polio, measles, mumps, diphtheria, and hepatitis B, a serious liver disease that can lead to cirrhosis and cancer. For information, call the American Liver Foundation, 1-800-223-0179. In the Orange Bowl, as if the Canes needed any motivation, the public address announcer has just uh, let the crowd and Dennis Erickson know that Penn State is trailing Illinois 21 to nothing, while Barton and company lead Miami 3 zip. Well, we talked about it earlier. Miami has the opportunity to control their own destiny, and Penn State and Illinois are doing what's necessary to put Miami in the catbird seat. So, you know, Miami's got to take care at home first. You know, they came out, didn't move the football to and out with the interception, and Pitt was able to march down the field, running the ball inside the tackles, which is unheard of against this University of Miami football team. And I am surprised that, uh, as you mentioned, Miami came out throwing the football. And they are committed to turnover. Here is Barton to kick off for the second time in less than five minutes. The first time he chopped at it. This time Al Shipman. And another German. Well, who will take it? They bobble it between the two of them, and Shipman comes out across the 20, 21, 22. Not necessarily sharp, but Miami owns the football. All off the interception by Mosley is a Florida native from Pahokee. Well, he comes home to his native state, makes the big play, and the Panthers able to convert a 37-yard field goal. You know, Paul Pahokee has a history of sending great football players up to the University of Pitt with Ricky Jackson. Well, it's now playing for the uh, San Francisco 49ers. Three receivers to the far side to spread the field to the near side half. And all the Panthers punched up two in the line of scrimmage. And thus, the slant comes right over the middle, and it's a big hit. Jonathan Harris. Nobody uh, stood over him. That he was wide open at the snap of the football, and Costa has his first completion of the day to the senior from Houston. Let's go back and look at it. I think this is just a, a planned play that if no one covers, you just pop it to the slot guy and let him run with it. And, you know, I expect to see Miami do that often today if uh, Pitt does not cover that slot guy. German and Jones, 7 and 6, Jones in the slot to the near side. On first down after the gain of 13, Cost sweep Stewart looking for daylight. Not much there. And he's stacked up after picking up a yard, a yard and a half. Pretty good pursuit to the football by all the white jerseys from Pittsburgh. Gerald Simpson, an outside linebacker, is the first one there. Tom Burns is a fine right in, about 15 sacks on the year. He rushes the passer effectively. And rather than John McCray today, Tom Tomalty comes back from injury and takes McCray's position. And yes, Anthony Dorsett is the 21-year-old son of the former Heisman Trophy winning and NFL Hall of Fame running back from Grace Street. Pitt campus 16 years ago. The screen set up to Stewart nicely. Across the 45 at midfield, first down Kings into Pitt territory. That's just a beautiful job by James Stewart of picking up his blocking, picking his way down the field and coming up with a first down. You know, big guy with uh, good hands, has great running ability where sometime he'll run over you, sometime he'll run around you. Good execution by the Hurricanes. Let's take another look at it. As you see, Frank just a little screen out there. He does a good job of looking the ball in his hands. And then watch him read his block. He almost loses his balance. 
cuts. But cuts back inside, picking up, blocking him. You know, when you got a big guy can do that, it makes you a very potent running attack. Another first down, and here's Costa in the pocket. Right over the middle of the field, and this one's caught A.C. Tellison. Tough eight to the 40-yard line. Curtis McGee, the strong safety, makes the stop on the senior, who a year ago had his career best day against Pittsburgh. Four receptions for 75 yards. Well, A.C. Tellison is, an, is another receiver, the veteran of the wars, because uh, last year he was a starter. This year he's had the split time, and, you know, he's starting to come on strong the last three ball games. Miami going with two tight ends at the moment. Chris T. Jones to the top of your screen. That's German at the bottom of the picture. Stewart. Oh, the running back takes the handoff and did not earn the first down. Just stood up at the 40-yard line. John McRae in there now for Tomalty. A guy who made 17 starts. There's 17 stops against West Virginia, the linebacker, here with a solid tackle now. Yeah, here you see Stewart going up in the hole, but right there, you've got him at the point of attack where he makes a good hit and stops him in his tracks. And, you know, the gang tackle that we talked about earlier, you see coming to, to bear because the Panthers are getting people around the football. Costa in this possession is three for three for 36 yards. They'll keep it on the ground. Need it. About two yards. Yeah, they will. And Stewart earns the first down. First down. Kane's trailing three to nothing. Let's check in with Joe on the field. Paul, the one thing they were concerned about before the game was would this team be ready to play? University of Miami's come out a little flat, but knowing the Penn State's down 21 0, got them juiced up now. Back to you. At the 36. Joe, thanks. Fresh set of downs for Miami. Driving out of the shadows into the sunny part of the field on a glorious day. Temperatures in the 80s. Costa right down the middle. And he's got it caught and down to the one-yard line. The tight end, Sae Tucker. The biggest gator thus far. A pickup of 35. And it's Tucker, the tight end on the receiving end. First and goal, Cage. Look, play action fake here. This is what happened when you got the big back like James Stewart. And you see Saeed come wide open down the middle of the field. Good job of looking the ball in his hands and trying to get into the end zone. And, you know, that's why Miami is so successful this year. The threat of the run, which makes the, threat, the pass a lot easier to complete. David Sumner, the free safety at Anthony Dorsett. Team down the tackle, but the Canes who trail in the first quarter by a field goal. Set to take their first lead of the day. And it's the quarterback sneak. No signal yet. Costa did not get in. Miami has added Derek Harris, the third tight end in there. He's actually the H-back, number 34, which gives them some blocking beef from that down by the goal line, short yardage situation. Well, they go with the short yardage, but uh, the guy that they've got a lot of confidence in is KC Jones and Terrell Green and Alan Simonette, that they just tried to wedge it in behind them and get it in the end zone. The ninth play of the drive unfolding here. Harris, the fullback. This is Ferguson now at the tail. Trying to get outside, and he does into the end zone. Touchdown! Danielle Ferguson, the sophomore from Miami. With the touchdown. And the Canes lead 6-3. to three. Right behind the big beefy Derek Harris with the block. And number one. Puts Miami in front of Majors and Company. Nice nine-play drive for the Canes, the length of the field. Here's Dane Pruitt. On to add the point after. And the kick is good. 7-3. More after this from Coors Light, the Silver Bullet. Reach for Coors Light and keep on moving. You know, it used to be that only doctors had a pager. Then, engineers and construction contractors saw how important it was to use a paging service. And of course, 
every executive needed one. But in today's world, we all need a pager. And with Answer Right, everyone can afford a pager. Many beepers look the same, but make no mistake, there is a difference. Only Answer Right has the super beeper. For the best in paging, call Answer Right. The tour's best will be serving it up in Antwerp. Sampras, Steve, they're the targets. Get by them and the treasure's yours. The European Community Championship. Final round coverage begins Sunday morning at 9, live on Sunshine. Employees of Time Warner Cable know that not all jobs are created equal. Theirs are better. It's not just the fantastic benefits, the latest technology, or newest equipment that make their work lives more satisfying. It's very simply put, the people. Employees of TWC are a team, and you may be able to join that winning group. Just stop by our offices at 3767 All-American Boulevard in Orlando and fill out an application for employment. Come and join the winning team at Time Warner Cable. Looking for a quality used car? You've got to see RC. We've got the car you're looking for ready for immediate delivery. That's right. Look at this great selection of family vehicles starting at just $240 a month. Performance vehicles from $260 a month and basic transportation as low as $220 a month. Remember, all these vehicles have been through a 38-point safety inspection and come with a warranty. RC Hills has easy financing, too, regardless of your past credit history. For a better car at a better price, you've got to see RC at one of these convenient locations. The top NCAA programs gather for the match of the year. It's all or nothing. That's the best try to make it to the big show. The women's NCAA Division I semifinals. Friday on Sunshine Network. Miami Hurricanes have just driven 78 yards to take their first lead of the afternoon. Nice toss sweep here now. Yeah, just a good good blocking out front. You see Alan Simonette and uh, Robert Harris, or Derek Harris, and uh, it was just a, a, a convoy into the end zone where Danielle Burks just had to follow his blocking. Nothing fancy, just uh, good, tough football. Set up by the 35-yard Costa to Sai Yucker. Tucker, rather, pass. First and goal at the one, and wearing a bandana at homecoming. The politically correct orange color, though, for Ferguson. Here is Pruitt. Pruitt's had a solid year. Modes of Deion Sanders. Yeah. Started a tradition, I'll say that for him. Certainly a style, fashion statement. Here's Jay Jones, one of the best in the Big East, takes it at his one-yard line. Out of the 15 sidelines, 20, 25 yard line, and out to the 28. Jones ranks third in the Big East, better than 22 yards per return. And if there is one positive for Pittsburgh in this net, it's the fact that they made Miami work a bit. Took them nine plays to get it into the end zone, and Pitt has been blasted on more than one occasion surrendering the big play this season. It took, it took Miami a little time to put it in the end zone, but they went back to basics. They started using that big fullback, James Jones, and then made the defense play honest so they could throw the ball down the field. The 60 wins is Hurricane Tenure hunting 61 today. Dennis Erickson watches West carry it up to the 30-yard line. That first step by Billy West, the sophomore from Smithfield, Ohio, is so explosive. You know, their running backs average better than five yards a carry. He's close to six is West. Four. I tell you, Paul, they keep running off that left side behind big Reuben Brown and Reggie Thomas against Warren Sapp and Kennard Lang. And, you know, they're having a great deal of success there. Their offense ranks in the top 30 statistically in college football. It's the defense that has caused the problems. The offense can play. I in turns, it's West again. West with the first down. He was hit shy of it, managed to fight through the tackle, entered the first. Burgess had him shy of the first down, and yet West picks up the first down. There you see good isolation there with uh, Lewis being picked up by the fullback, and West just doing a good job of lowering his shoulders and getting the extra yardage. So West, who came into this game with 1,010 yards to his credit, is off and running on a big day. Four times this year, he's rushed for better than 100 yards. On first down, trailing in the first quarter, 7-3. to three. Ryan will give it to West, and he's knocked down in the backfield. Purchase on the blitz, takes him down for a loss of close to three. 
Warren Sapp as well. And Lewis, good penetration this time by that Kane defense. Well, they tried to run a little isolation draw, and uh, they had Burgess coming on the blitz. Good call by Greg McMacken, the uh, defensive coordinator. You see C.J. Richardson, high free safety. Carlos Jones has left the game. In fact, they've added a lineman at Dwayne Johnson, number 94. On second and 12, West turns left, cuts back right. And he's back to the original line of scrimmage, and it'll be third and about 10. And a situation here where Miami can gamble a bit and come after Ryan. Ryan's been uh, quite a fine over the last few weeks for Johnny Major. Sean Fitzgerald opened the year at quarterback, and John Ryan, number 14, came back. He took the starting job and threw for 433 yards against West Virginia and four touchdowns. Nat, to show that that was no fluke. Last week, threw for four TDs once again. He's put together two excellent games. Well, I think he's got a good defense to, to go up against today, and we'll find out if those numbers are real because, you know, against this Hurricane football team, it's not a team you throw the ball well. Miami set on that draw and runs west. <laughs> East and west, right to the boundary, and on fourth down, Pitt will have to surrender the football to the Kings and punt it out of there. Well, here you see a draw once again. Pitt showing their respect for this Miami defense, uh, pass defense, that they didn't want to take a chance of putting it in the air. Apparently, we've had our first flag thrown today, and John Smith will call over Warren Sapp and make certain that uh, he wants to do what Mr. Smith believes he does, and that's get the football, decline the penalty. Illegal use of hands will be declined, and it's fourth down. Well, Major's bunch has played rather flawlessly thus far. And old Johnny, how's it going? There's Jamie German. Nate Cochran is a fine kicker. Ranks third in the Big East, averaging a better than 43 yards per effort. In fact, a pit is third in net putting. He hangs it pretty high. He'll get it away. Nice punt. Over German's head, it bounds at the five, heads toward the end zone, and will be down for a touch pass. Cochran kicking at the length of the field, a 61-yard effort. More after this from Coors Light Silver Bullet. Reach for Coors Light and keep on moving. This holiday, don't buy them a health club membership. Buy them their own health club from Exercise Experience. Imagine enjoying a complete workout in the comfort of home on name brand fitness equipment like the sturdy yet stylish Vectra Online 1500 Home Gym or the fully electronic Tetris motorized climber with independent stepping action. It's all possible this holiday season when you give the gift the whole family can enjoy. Quality built fitness equipment from Exercise Experience, your fitness equipment superstore. Billions of years ago, the only place to get a nice gift was the airport. A good meal? The airport. Rent a wheel? The airport. That's why Thrifty Car Rental opened in your neighborhood. Today in Orlando, you can rent the roomy Dodge Caravan for only $29.95 per day when you mention Rate Plan SM. And if you're at the airport, we're in that neighborhood too. Your neighborhood Thrifty Car Rental, historically known for low rates. Miami Hurricane Basketball, we've got your game. The best in college basketball comes to Miami Arena as the Hurricanes host exciting Big East Conference action. See the Canes as they host the six Big East teams that played in the NCAA tournament. Georgetown, Syracuse, Connecticut, Seton Hall, Providence, and Boston College. Your Miami basketball season ticket also includes the Orange Bowl Basketball Classic versus the Running Rebels of UNLV. For Miami basketball season tickets, call 1-800-GO-CANES. Journey through the Stargate and discover another world by entering the Stargate Sweepstakes. The grand prize is a three-night cruise for four to the Bahamas aboard the Big Red Boat, America's number one family cruise and vacation. Winner and guest will be flown to Orlando via U.S. Air and begin their trip with a day at the Kennedy Space Center. Send your name and address to Sunshine Network and watch November 21st for the live drawing during the Orlando Magic Game. Send in your entry today for a vacation that'll be out of this world. Now playing at theaters everywhere. 
Danielle Ferguson with a one-yard touchdown shot and a 37-yard field goal by Pitts. David Merritt, our scoring through better than 13 minutes of play here in the first quarter. Miami taking over for the second time, or rather the third time, and this game begins at its 20-yard line. And here's Costa to go up top. Going to the boundary, and it is caught. Keeping his feet in bounds, Christy Jones. Good job of footwork up at the 39-yard line, a gain of 19 by number 85. So the experience of the senior, Christy Jones, as uh, we take another look at it, you watch him do an excellent job for all you young receivers out there. Watch him make sure that he gets one of the feet down because in college football, you only got to have one in. But he does a good job of dragging his feet, trying to get both of them in for the reception. On first down, here's Stewart. No game there. Driven back with a flag down. Stewart's yardage last week came primarily in the second half at Syracuse of his 100 yards, 69 came in the final two quarters. The day early, Stewart. Four carries, all of six yards. So Pitt has him in the crosshairs thus far. Don Smith and his crew. Things over. Tom Tomalty, the pit captain. That'll go against Miami. The first against the Kings today. And although Dennis doesn't like it, <laughs> here's Joe. Paul, Daniel Ferguson scored the first touchdown of the day, but it's not easy. A guy from Miami. How about that for support? <laughs> there must be 40 number ones here. Ferguson, he's got the whole family here. He might score again before the day's over. Back to you, Paul. Number one in your program, number one in your heart. After the big march off, Miami now push back inside its 30. Costin on the draw. Stewart for about three. Four man, if not a five man front thus far for Pitt. Matt sitting on James Stewart. Yeah, they're walking the linebackers up in there and they're sitting on it, but the thing that they're doing, Paul, that's giving them a lot of success is they're not taking gaps. They're playing playing a two-gap, playing the lineman head up and just reacting to keep James Stewart from having a big play. Johnny Majors has won only five games and 20 starts in this his second go-around in Pitt. But one of the most popular, not the uh, grandest figure on coaches and Panther history remains fully confident he can get a turn. Here's German on a little slip screen across the 35 to the 36-yard line and then surrounded by white jerseys. The sixth completion of the first quarter for Costa. Here we take another look at this quick screen to Jamie German. You, you see the lineman coming out. Good block there by the tackle, but you know, this play was kind of slow in developing, and he ended up back over the center of the field, which didn't give him room to run. You know, Jamie German is a great runner with the football after the catch, but there, Pitt did a good job of defending the play. The wind appears to be at Costa's back as he works from the gun, needing a dozen yards on third down. Pitt coming after it. They can't get to him. He gets it away, and it's a first down in Panther territory. What a completion. Chris T. Jones in front of Dorsett. First down, Hurricane. Frank Costa showed a lot of poise there. There was a lot of pressure around him as we go back, and uh, maybe we got to look at it. You see him step up, slide up in the pocket, slide stop to his left, keeping his eyes downfield, and hits Chris T. Jones for the first down. Good poise by the senior quarterback, Frank Costa. That took some heart, didn't it? Took a lot of heart to hang in there, knowing you don't get hit, but he did a good job of delivering the football for the first down. On his way down, he connects for a gain of 17 yards. First down. And that'll do it. That's the end of the first quarter. Miami owns the football and the first period lead as we head to the second stanza in a 7-3 game at Miami. The Orange Bowl in Miami, our producer-director today, Tom Hastings, Joe Rose working the sidelines, and a man who caught more than his fair share passes in this stadium. Matt Moore alongside. I'm Paul Kennedy, and Johnny Major's Ball Club trails nationally ranked Miami. 
seven to three. They've done a fine job of hanging with the Canes in the first quarter. It's first down for Miami as the second period begins. And the toss and now the reverse will go back to German. German is able to turn the corner and then he slips at the 45, 44 yard line. Rich Olsen thought they'd have an opportunity to use some razzle-dazzle today, but uh, Pittsburgh defended it pretty well. It's a game of but three. I'll look numerically at how these two teams produced in the first 15 minutes, Ned. Well, that's that's a good uh, indication of how well Pitt's played. Uh, they've been able to hold Miami to six first downs and stay within the ball game. It's uh, looking at the time for, of possession, and it's basically even. Miami had that play really set up, though, uh, that last play reverse, and Zatini Moody did a good job of snuffing it out. Otherwise, Miami had a big, big run. Green, Harris, and uh, a penalty flag, too, all flying. There's in Miami with the three receivers set on this side. The Canes expected a lot of blitzing out of the Panthers today. We haven't seen it so far. And uh, this is against Pittsburgh. Offsides. They've decided that to bunch it up in there and make Miami go the long way. Nine plays, ten plays or so. Try to avoid the, uh, the home run. Here, here you see uh, the uh, nose guard trying to get off on the snap and uh, get the guard from being offside. But you know, Pitt has decided that they're going to play it honest. They're going to try and just match up with Miami and make Miami uh, drive the length of the field and score touchdowns instead of giving them the big plays. As you can see, a five-man front. Four down lineman, one linebacker, on second down. Stewart, nowhere. Maybe half a yard. And then again, there are Panthers. Watch the jam up front here. That's just a, John McCray's the first one there. That's just a good job of playing, playing, playing the man over here. The, the defensive line is doing a good job of stuffing the offensive line and just not giving Stewart anywhere to run. Get this for a number for Stewart. Five carries, ten yards. Do the math on that. Wow. Third down, possession snap. Maybe in four down territory. You see Costa checking off. Frank turns, gets it to Stewart. Stewart fumbles the football. And it's Pittsburgh football. The Panthers pounce on the second turnover today. Freshman John Jenkins comes rushing in from the secondary and falls on the ball. And Miami coughs it up. Let's see if we can see what happened on this play. It's just a, a runoff to the left side. You see good block in the point of attack. And there it's just swatted out. You know, James Stewart just didn't do a good job of putting the ball away. And, you know, Pitt's doing what they need to do to stay in this ball game. is you know, make Miami go to the length of the field and see if they'll turn it over. And here we have another costly turnover by the Hurricane offense. Jason Chavis, middle linebacker, made the big hit. Now the crowd stirred as Ryan settles under center. An eye set behind it. Dukes and West. It is West. West for a couple of yards. And that clock runs. James Burgess, the linebacker. The first helmet there for the Canes. So this pit team, which has been shellacked a couple of times this year, they surrendered more than 400 yards of total offense on three occasions. In fact, gave up 600 yards to Syracuse. Picked up a win in their last outing. They had an open date last week. And uh, they are certainly much improved as we head into the meat of the second quarter. They're not playing high-risk defense, and that's keeping them in the ball game. And you know, that's what you've got to do. Ryan with time. Floats it downfield, and it is caught for a first down. Out of bounds and a late hit, too. So tack on 15 more after Billy Davis made the sideline grab and was belted into the Hurricane bench. It's a gain of 15, and Earl Little will be charged with the personal foul, and that's the third penalty today against Dennis Erickson's football team. That's just a senseless penalty there, Paul. There's no reason to hit the guy. He's two, three yards out of bounds. He's made the catch, and that was a great throw by John Ryan throwing it up and over with, with defenders all in his face. 
And the big step off will mark this ball. Here we see Billy West coming all the way across the field. And Ryan just does a good job of throwing it up and over. And he's out of bounds, clearly out of bounds, when Earl Lowe comes in and hit him. And, you know, you just can't, you can't do that. All you do is hurt your team and put your team and your defense in bad situations. Reminds me a bit, this game does, of the Virginia Tech game a few weeks ago. Miami has put the ball on the ground twice. Commits the mistake there. And down 7-3. to three. Here come the Panthers in Miami territory at the 37. West. Late developing play. Cuts to daylight. Drives it inside the 30 down to the 29. The initial hole was closed. May have been a broken play, and he cut to the outside quickly and has nine. That's just Billy West showing his great athletic ability of seeing the hole is closed and jumping outside and, and, and getting a first down. You know, as you can see, the play is designed to go over the right side, and he comes out the back door. That's just good running by Billy West. He's the only Panther to carry the football in the first half. Already he's toted it 13 times and he's halfway to 100. He has 57 yards. Full house set on second and short. They want the first down. Right here, Dad. And they were going to use two shots to get the first. And they picked the first out up as West works the right side. Well, Johnny May just realizes one thing here, Paul, is that as long as they've got the football, UM cannot score. So they just want to control the football and continue to play solid defense and give themselves a chance to win in the fourth quarter. Miami is a team that's sort of wandering around. Look like, you know, they didn't come in here to play today. They're not fired up. You don't see any zealous emotion going on. So, you know, Miami is a team that really today is not prepared emotionally to play the football game at this point. What do coaches say? You only have so many get them up opportunities with your team and uh, you know that Erickson had to use that last week with Syracuse. A lot of emotion went into that game. It is a first down, but by the nose of the ball here. Yeah, but you, you know, when you're in this position where you control your own destiny the way the Hurricane does, you know, they've got to get better each week with the idea that they want to be here on New Year's Day playing for the national championship and they can't mess around and stop their toe with a team like Pittsburgh by not being ready to play. The only two wins the Panthers have produced, look at that number. This year, a win over 1AA Ohio and a victory two weeks ago against Temple. First and 10 at the Kane 28 yard line. Now give the full house and set on first down. No wide receivers and a flag fly. The inside handoff will carry the ball down to the 25. Looked to be Maurice Washington, and it was the senior on his first carry of the afternoon. Kenny Holmes, number 90 in your screen, made the stop for Miami. First time today that Washington has toted the ball, and only the eighth time this year. But Pittsburgh makes a rare mistake in the early going. That will push him back to 10. Gonna push him. Let's see if we can see what happened on this play. As you can see, the offensive tackle gets his hands outside, and he's holding on to the defensive lineman. But uh, to no avail, the sad part about that is that you give up 10 yards, and you still didn't have a positive play. Put your team in bad situation, where now it's first and 20 for a team that really wants to control the football and run it. You know, you don't want to be in a passing situation. Uh, Johnny Majors may have just tipped his hand. He's pulled the tight ends and sent it fast flanker Dietrich Gels, the second receiver. Billy Davis, we've seen him today make a couple of nice catches. He's back in the game as well. So three receivers return, as does Chad Askew, to the bottom of your screen, number one. On first down and 20. Right in play action. He has to scramble. He gets it away, and it's incomplete. We could have had grabbing, but won't. And Ryan at midfield is shaken up. He was triple teamed. And Sap and Burgess, the linebacker, too, laid him out. Let's go back and take a good look at uh, John Ryan as he gets pressure from Sap and Holmes. And you know, he just really took a blow there. But let's give the kid a lot of credit. He hung in there and got rid of the football and you know, kept it from being a bigger loss. That means Sean Fitzgerald, who until three weeks ago was the starting quarterback, a junior college transfer from Los Angeles, number seven, joins the huddle. Ryan is out with 11 and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Following the incompletion. And here is 
Fitzgerald. Played at Los Angeles Valley State Junior College. And now they are warning the Miami sideline to please get back. They used to have get back coaches, Nat, when you play. We used to have them. Coach would walk along and say, get back off the chart. Back up, back up. Yeah, that's uh, that's something that all programs have, and even the University of Miami's uh, program have coaches to do that, but it's hard to keep those kids back, you know, when they're pumped up. They know that this is a big play. Second and a long, long way to go. You don't have to get it back all at once. Here is West. West, blocking breaks down. He managed to find four yards. How did he do that? I'll tell you, he's got great feet, Paul. He, he does a good job of, you know, stopping and starting, changing direction, and, you know, he has the ability to make something out of nothing, and th there we saw him take, make four yards when it should have been a loss. Now more than 60 yards rushing on the day. Should have been dropped in his own backfield. Watch this move. Oh, great, great job of jumping over a would-be tackle and then changing direction, picking up four yards. And he gets down good and low so that he's always falling forward. The nickel package in now for Miami. Leaving the game, Corin Francis reporting for duty. That's Juan Russell. Five backs defensively for the Kings and out of the gun here is Fitzgerald. On third down, he has it caught with a flag flying into the play, shy of the first down. On the receiving end, Curtis Anderson. But the clock is stopped off a penalty away from the football. We have had some pushing and shoving between the Miami secondary and the Panther receiving core. And uh, the initial indication is this is against Pitt. They've been barking at each other first half today. Johnny Majors Panthers trail, but by seven to three. Here in the second quarter. I was surprised that they took the penalty there instead of uh, declining it and uh, taking the ball. Delay a game was the call. Oh, okay. Well, that's understandable. Delay a game, the call. So I stand corrected. Miami had no choice in that penalty. There you go. Well, what do you call here? About well, third and twenty. About 21. Well, if I'm Pitt, I go up, I throw it up for grabs. I, I give my star receiver a chance to make a big play with the idea that uh, the worst thing happens is the, you know, we have to punt the football. Pitt is headed toward the uh, south end zone, the open end zone of the Orange Bowl. And into a pretty good win as you see Old Glory fly. Yesterday was Veterans Day. We salute our veterans throughout the United States. We understand there, here as you look at the scoreboard, the officials and John Smith's crew attempting to put time back on the clock. Apparently it did, it rolled during that delay of game penalty. Well, 1040 is the way it's going to stand. I, we are not certain here if the, the official time will be kept on the field. There's been no announcement to that effect. But as Nat says here, why not air it up? Now, Miami has not surrendered a touchdown in 15 quarters and has not allowed a score against a Big East rival this year. Can they let Pitt into the end zone? Well, West can't get out of there this time, and a flag flies too. Still another penalty marker down. Ray Lewis. Went eyeball to eyeball with the dangerous West and makes the tackle. Pitt decided to try and just get as much as they can and try and kick the field goal. As you see him try and run the draw of the West here, and Ray Lewis just does, does a good job of reading it and coming up with the tackle. And it's holding against Pitt. Yeah, I think you, with a field goal kicker like Majors has, who can kick and has kicked a 54-yard field goal, He's in position now to boot about a 54-yard field goal with a yeah, we stiff breeze in his back. You got to push him out of there. Here, 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 here we see the the hole there is, but uh, the big play here is made by Ray Lewis. 
and that's the important thing. We've got uh, an opportunity for the Hurricanes to push it back again and try and come up with even a bigger play. Jeff Craig, the right guard, number 60. Sophomore appeared to be the offensive lineman guilty of the hold. So that's 10 more. That makes it third and 30. The third and 37, actually, from the spot of the foul. So number seven has to cover 37 yards. He has to actually get this ball inside the Miami 18 to earn the first. Miami brings four. They'll run it straight ahead to West, to midfield, and kick it out of there. Want to do anything silly that would give Miami a big play opportunity? Well, if you if you go back, they had first and ten down down around the 30-yard line and had a chance to to go in and get some more points on the board. And they started with a holding penalty and they just continually went backwards where they made mistake after mistake. You know, they should have been able to come away with at least a try for a field goal. There were three consecutive penalties on that drive. Cochran's initial punt today sailed a booming 61 yards. This time, what looks to be into that win. He hangs it up very high, and German and everybody else in the stadium watches it bounded to the sideline. A pause in the action. Let's take a break in a 7-3 football game. of Makita Design. Innovative. Always a leader. So how do you make the best even better? Throw away the key. Makita. It's all the power you need. For a limited time, receive a free extra battery with your Makita purchase. Miami Hurricane Basketball, we've got your game. The best in college basketball comes to Miami Arena as the Hurricanes host exciting Big East Conference action. See the Canes as they host the six Big East teams that played in the NCAA tournament. Georgetown, Syracuse, Connecticut, Seton Hall, Providence, and Boston College. Your Miami basketball season ticket also includes the Orange Bowl Basketball Classic versus the Running Rebels of UNLV. For Miami basketball season tickets, call 1-800-GO-CANES. It's been time again, and Don Shula's ready to take Miami into the highlight zone. So get ready, because Sunshine Network's going to take you along for the ride. Hello, I'm Jay Randolph. Join Kerry Ross next Monday. Troy Vincent and James Saxon will be here to take your phone calls. All the best plays from the huddle to the hit. The game within the game, brought to you live each week. The Miami Dolphins Monday Night Magazine, 7 p.m. on Sunshine. Dial a mattress. Low warehouse prices. Gave me a price, and I couldn't believe it. We wound up getting two mattresses instead of one because the price was right. And we saved quite a bit of money over the department store. Dial 1-800-MATTRESS. It's fast, easy, and convenient. Get low warehouse prices on Sealy, Serta, and Simmons. Express two-hour delivery, including Saturday and Sunday, and pay only upon approval. Dial 1-800-MATTRES. Keep off the last dance for savings. We saved about $500. It's homecoming for the Hurricanes, and down amidst the pomp and pageantry, once again, here's Joe Rose. Paul Dennis Erickson has been walking up and down the sideline along with his assistant coaches, not talking about offensive or defensive plays, but talking about getting this team pumped up. They're as flat as I've seen them all year. Back to you guys. All right, Joe. From the 16-yard line on first down. For Costa, play action to Larry Jones, who's in there. Costa's in trouble. Costa's going to be sacked back at the five-yard line. Frank Costa goes down. He's grabbed by number nine. Tom Bart. Tom Bart. The top sack master for the Panthers has his first of this game and his fifth of the season. Here you see Pitt switching up a little bit, coming with the blitz. And Costa has protection, but it just takes him too long to, too long to get rid of the football. And uh, Barnt comes up with the sack. That was his 18th career sack for the 270-pound Ohio native. Yeah, that was interesting, interesting to see Pitt come back and match up and go man-to-man -man and come with the blitz. 
Again, Costa out of the end zone. Hit as he releases, and it's picked off. The Panthers own the football. Intercepted. Denorris Mosley has his second of this football game. Mosley picks off Costa for a second time. Bring it on, he says. And a pass that was underthrown intended for Chris T. Jones, it appears. Well, you know, that the, the out route is a, is a very tough pass to throw. And this ball just floated out there. It looked like it took forever to get there. As you see, Frank goes back. He's looking at his receiver all the way. And this ball is just a floater. You got two people in the same area. And uh, Mosley just comes up with the pick. Credit Matt Hoslick here with the hit on Costa. He didn't get any zip on it. It was Yateel Green, the intended target. Frank's having a tough day. With a huge break here, John Ryan is back at quarterback, and West winds the football to the 15-yard line. West has been a workhorse. Kennard Lang on the stop, and there is our hero, Nord Morse, coming up with his second interception. And you know, both of his interceptions have been good plays on his part, but really errant throws by Frank Costa. Cousin of Rodney Pete, the former Southern Cal and Detroit Lions quarterback. And as we mentioned, he's a Floridian from Mahokie High School. Six interceptions on the season now. Two have come this afternoon in a game he won't soon forget. And look at this formation. Look at the formation by Pitt. Their offensive line, that's legal, set to the right side. Ryan throws, and it is caught inside the 10 at the 9-yard line. Ryan a little trickery by the Pitt Panthers. Darren Dombrowski on the trick play makes the catch. Now they say he did not catch the ball. Incomplete. It came out as he was falling down. To great setup by the uh, Pitt team where they had the hurricane defense confused but wasn't able to execute the catch. Shoot. That's a Bobby Bowden S, I would guess, by a Johnny Majors. Well, the race, uh, that play from the highlight film, it's third and eight here. Ryan, four receivers, no running backs, the blitz is on. And they flip it out. And the 15, 14 yard line. With the catch and out of bounds, Dietrich Jones. Earl Little, the free safety, pushed him to the sideline. Earl Little. He gels wearing Rohan Marley's name on the side of his, or Ashley, rather, no, it said Marley. Fourth now. Ashley on the, on the helmet. Here we see uh, Greg McMackin comes with the blitz, you know, to make it happen early, and uh, Earl Little comes up, makes a good hit, pushes him out of bounds. Good defense by the Hurricanes. Merrick has nailed a 37-yarder today. Here comes a 32-yard try by the left footer. Out of Orion's hole, Darren Dabrowski to snap it. He does, and there is the kick. And the kick is good. So Pitt has scored twice. Both times coming off with turnovers. They're hanging with the Kings and what has to be a surprise in the Orange Bowl. some sports this November? Well, gobble up some NBA action with the Orlando Magic and Miami Heat as they fill up the Nets. Then, feast your eyes on women's action as they dish it out with the women's NIT. Ready for dessert? Well, spoon down some hurricane action as they eat up opponents on the gridiron and the hard courts. Still hungry? We'll pile up a plate of sports this November on Sunshine. The NBA's best play here. Today's top stars, the league's key matchups, plays of the week, plus a trip down memory lane. Step into the spotlight with NBA action. Shooting all season on Sunshine. Fluids and juices. Whoa, ho, 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 that's scary stuff. And it's opening soon. It's the extraterrestrial alien encounter here at Disney World. Well, there's excitement here, but what are you doing on this channel? The big excitement is going on over at the Free Preview Channel. Great channels, three channels of HBO, two of Cinemax, and the Disney Channel. But guess what? This is your last night. You've got to stop over right now. Check it out. And wait till you hear about the offer. Don't sit there. Come on, right now. I am the 
super middleweight champion of the world, James Lights Out Tony. I'm the king of the middleweight, Roy Jones Jr. I'm undefeated, and I'm definitely gonna stay undefeated. I've knocked out 23 out of 26. Now it's your turn. The two greatest fighters in the world, the single biggest fight of the year, Tony versus Jones for the World Super Middleweight Championship. Pay-per-view is your ringside seat for all the uncivil action. For commentary on the latest happenings in the sports world, it's Sports Talk Live, Florida's only live televised call-in sports talk show. Wrap with the beat writers who cover the breaking stories on Sports Talk Live, Monday night on Sunshine. They say pity pit today at Miami's turn, Miami's homecoming, and the Kings are 11 and 0 over their last 11 homecomings. And Dennis Erickson though knows that Pitt has shown up today. Johnny Majors has it fired up and ready to go. And yes, sir. It's a seven to six football game. Martin the booted away for the third time. What odds could you have gotten the fact that Martin Pitt would kick off three times in the first half against the third-ranked Canes? Well, this is not the game we expected, but uh, let's give Pitt a lot of credit for coming in with a with a good scheme offensively and defensively that will that allow them a, a chance to compete in the second half with a chance to win a football game. They've done a couple of things today on that. The opening kickoff, rather than kicking it deep, they chopped at the ball. They have held on to the football, as you can see, with some razzle-dazzle. Uh, David West has had a huge game, and they've also intercepted Frank Costa not once but twice. Well, they've done a few things to basically keep the Miami football team off balance, but they've also taken chances when it was necessary, but uh, have not done anything to hurt themselves. They've stayed away from the turnovers. Here comes Barton. We're playing football once again. Not necessarily a deep kick, and German fields it already at the 11 yard line. Goes back toward the center of the field, and he crosses the 16 to the 20, fighting for the football out to the 23-yard line. A lot of running around for a return of 12 yards. That high kick, too, gave Pitt an opportunity to hustle down there and cover it. Good special team play by getting the ball up, uh, good hang time, and giving your defenders a chance to get down and cover it before Jamie German is able to get started upfield. Well, Frank Costa trying to fight through a, a tough afternoon and talking to his offensive coordinator, Rich Olson. Olson had said that Frank had enjoyed a great week of practice. And here was his opportunity to shine. He had four games left in his career to really make an impact, to lead the Canes on a perhaps national championship rush. Well, he's got to step up his level of play to, to do that. I, I think that the Hurricanes are good enough that uh, you know they're going to be there. But uh, Frank Costa has to step up to the plate and play a little bit better, and he's been doing uh, so far this year. Number 23, Larry Jones, tokes the football for the first time today, the senior. A year ago, he had a career day against this pit ball club. He rushed for 135 yards and scored a touchdown. Or well, perhaps he's a spark today for Stewart is struggling, having gained all of 10 yards on five carries. Well, they put Jones into the game, and he's gained but a yard and a half. Second down, he's the lone back behind Costa. You see six men up, and Pitt looks to be coming. Costa will throw against man coverage, and he has Christy Jones across the 40, up to the 42. Pitt blitz that time, and it's a game of... Uh, about well, seven yards for the first. Well, here's a good ISO, as you see. Uh, Chris T. Jones coming down. It's nothing but a quick post route. And uh, good job of popping his head down, catching the football. For all you young receivers out there, your ball's below your waist or below your, your chest. Pop that head down. Make sure you watch it all the way in your hands. Chris T. Jones, a veteran receiver for the Hurricanes. That's a 17-yard gain on the third reception today. By Jones, Costa now leading 7-6. First down, he's going to air it out. Looking again for Jones. Dorsett's right with him, and it's incomplete. Inside the 10-yard line. Dorsett matched against the taller Jones. I'll say this about Dorsett. He anchors the 4 by 100 track team that set the fifth school record at the Penn Relays. He can sprint much like Papa about 20 years ago. Well, this is just a good job of one-on-one. -on -one. Dorsett has him all the way to the goal line, and he's running with him step by step. Got a little jock and a little shoving and pushing there, and Christy Jones actually get away with a push and then wasn't able to come down with the football. But let's give Anthony Dorsett a lot of credit for being there, making 
making the play. That young man's an athlete. Second down. And Costa, oh, timeout. There is that pit defense doing something that he did not expect. The pause in the action will step aside as well as Costa talks it over with the Miami staff. design. Innovative. Always a leader. Makita. It's all the power you need. some sports this November? Well, cobble up some NBA action with the Orlando Magic and Miami Heat as they fill up the Nets. Then, feast your eyes on women's action as they dish it out with the women's NIT. Ready for dessert? Well, spoon down some hurricane action as they eat up opponents on the gridiron and the hard courts. Still hungry? We'll pile up a plate of sports this November on Sunshine. Golf Digest introduces eight ways to a better golf game. It can help you experience a game that's better all around. Get the eight ways to a better golf game video. It's guaranteed to improve your game, and it's free with your paid subscription. Order 12 issues of Golf Digest for just $19.77 now, and get the latest video free. Call 800-652-2112. That's 800-652-2112. Jimmy used to hand me excuses. Now he hands me papers like this. The kid? A different kid. Wish I could take credit for it. I thought I was losing him to the streets till he got a big brother. For thousands of kids with just one parent, a big brother or sister makes a big difference in turning a kid's life around. Big brothers, big sisters, big impact. Now that's my Jamie. Storm clouds gathering in South Florida. This will raise a few eyebrows. Pitt is hanging tough with Miami as Johnny Major's defensive game plan has been quite effective. Dennis Erickson and company forced to burn their first time out of three. And now Costa against look a three-man front for the first time. On second down, all those DBs back there expecting pass. They get pass, and it's added away. Incomplete off the fingertips. A catchable ball. Yakeel Green could not hold on. Right at midfield. Look at this. Last couple of weeks, Pitt is much improved. Third down at 10. Pitt did a great job of disguising their coverage there. They came with a three-man line, and once again, Frank threw right into coverage. So you know, we're very lucky that we didn't come up with another interception there. That is the Miami Hurricanes, friends, with, yes, seven yards rushing. Out of the gun, Costa against the three-man rush. Guns, and it is caught by Christy Jones. He spins it half sideline. Jones inside the 30. First down, Miami. A rifle on Costa, who drills Jones, and it's a gain of 28 for the Hurricane. Big throw, big throw and catch by Frank Costa and his favorite receiver, Chris T. Jones. But as you see Chris T. Jones, the thing that he does well here, watch him step back to the football. And that's the reason he's able to come up with the catch. And then he's off to the races. Good job of catching the football and running with it by Chris T. Jones. Anthony Dorsett, though. And here we see Frank Costa giving Chris T. Jones a high five for bailing him out, making a big play. Anthony Dorsett was shaken up on the play. He's being attended to. Uh, he was one of three defenders surrounding Jones when he hauled that pass in. Where Anthony Dorsett was really breaking back on the football and might have had a chance for the pick if Chris Jones had to step back in. And you'll see the collision as he steps back in and boom. That's how, he's, how he gets hurt by his own defender. But good job for Christy Jones coming back to meet the football. The only reason that was a completion is he stepped back into the football. It's a gain of 28 
Ed Norris set, help to his feet. He'll go off to the sideline. He is able to walk and put pressure, as you see, on that left leg. Maurice Williams will come in to take his place. And next Saturday, live on pay-per-view, the Canes travel to Philadelphia to take on the Owl. Game time, 1 o'clock. Check with your local cable system to order the Canes and the Owls here on Sunshine Network. So two big gainers today. One, Desai Tucker will pick up a 35, this 28-yarder, but Miami needed a spark to Chris T. Jones. And with the storm clouds gathering, Inside the 30, leading about seven to six. Up into this Stewart. He ran over his own man, it appeared, and Terrell Green, the offensive lineman, knocked down in his own backfield. Once the ball may have come loose, Nat, too, but uh, Miami owns it. Well, he never got a chance to put it away, but uh, as you can see, the defender, Gerald Simpson, Moody comes in and does a good job of uh, hitting him before he can get started. You know, Pitt's doing a great job of mixing up their defense where one minute they come after you, the next minute they drop in coverage. This thus far has been Major's finest hour. I promise you, in his second go-round at Pitt. There's the toss sweep. Stewart to the 25. Inside the 25 to the 24. Jim Williams, the sophomore strong safety, leads the defensive charge for Pitt, and it's third down with five minutes remaining in the first half. Tom Tomalty, the outstanding linebacker, leaves the game. Here we see just a quick pitch where they're trying to get him out on that soft corner, and here you see Tom Tomalty coming in, meeting James Stewart coming up at the tackle. A.C. Tellison, along with Uteel Green to the far side. And it's Jones and German to the bottom of your picture. The blitz is on, and the catch is made. And it's a first down, first and goal Miami. Uteel Green carries it inside the 10-yard line. Miami beats the blitz. Miami had this play on a long count, which gave them plenty of time to see the blitz coming, and Frank Costa showed his coolness as he stepped back and hit Yatiel Green coming underneath. There's lightning in the area now. Very dark skies, a thunderbolt, and a loud clap, too, coming out of that dark cloud that you see. First in goal, Miami. Stewart, the running back for Costa. He'll take it straight ahead. Now bounce outside. Stewart, run to the sidelines and out of bounds at the eight-yard line. Norris Mosley is over there. Hayes Clark, the linebacker, number 43. One thing about Pitt, though, they're making Miami work. This is a team that many thought was as much as a 40-point underdog against the 7-1 Kings. Oh, this pit defense is showing not only are they strong, but they're showing good speed where they're not allowing the backs to get outside. Miami's quickness and speed is not uh, being a big factor so far. The tenth snap of this drive. Well, it's coming. Costa fires into the end zone. Incomplete. No flag. The crowd wanted pass interference. Jamie German along with Daphnis in the area. There was contact. No pass interference. Here Watch you the see blitz. the blitz coming. Frank does a good job of getting rid of it. And, uh, ended up being an errant pass. Jamie German is saying he was held by the, the Norse Mosley, but uh, no flags. The 11th play just ahead. Miami needs to punch this one into the end zone, get some distance between itself and these uh, pesky Panthers. Al Shutman, the far side for Miami. Five receivers out. Costa into the end zone, and it is incomplete. A.C. Tellison got his hands on it, could not make the catch. And Costa went down under a swarm of white jersey. Pitt got a free blitz on the quarterback, and Costa had to throw it early, hung it up, and uh, didn't get it outside for enough. A.C. Tellison was not able to locate it until the ball was on the ground. So Miami with three shots at the 10-yard line. 
Here we see another shot as the free blitzer come. You see Costa throwing it early, but uh, is not able to get it all the way outside. Dane threw it on to attempt a 25-yard field goal. And the kick is good. Miami able to extend its lead to 10 to 6 as Pruitt connects to end a 12 play drive. Took Miami a long time, but the Pruitt caps the prolonged march. Good long march by the University of Miami, but they still weren't able to get it in there, Paul. And, you know, Pitt have to go in the halftime feeling pretty good about themselves. They're only down 10 to 6 in, in a game where they were expected to be down by 40 and half. So, you know, the, the ball game is it's slated right now. Uh, you have to give Pitt a lot of credit because with a touchdown, they can still win this football game. And the wind really begins to gust. Out on the field, there's a nasty storm. The open end of the Orange Bowl blowing in off the ocean, right where you see those high rises to the right of your screen. Basketball bounces your way. A couple of games that you can see, depending on your area, the state of Florida, down here in South Florida. It's the Mavericks against a new ball club, the Miami Heat. Kevin Willis and all those new faces. And, of course, Dick Mata back to run the Mavs. And Washington with Scott Skiles making his first return to the arena. The members of the original Orlando Magic. Pretty good double header in the Sunshine State next Tuesday only on Sunshine Network. Scott Skiles has put some life into the bullets, hasn't he? Feisty ball player. He's a very talented athlete, and uh, you know, Washington is very happy to have him because, uh, you know, for the last several years, they've suffered. Now they've seemed to turn the corner. You know, and I like the way you put that, Paul, the new Miami Heat. <laughs> Boy, in the blink of an eye, it changed everybody. Here comes Jay Jones. Look out. Big head at the 16-yard line. Jones able to hold on to the football, but Kevin Brinkworth, the linebacker that you see there, a big-time lick. 41 to 14. And Ryan today knocked out earlier in this game. Returns to try and kill off the final three and a half minutes of the first half. And the crowd here, better than 50,000. Imploring the Kane to get the football back. On first down. Nothing for West. Billy West today has carried the ball now 18 times for about 70 yards. Warren Sapp and Pat Riley, the heart of that Miami Hurricane defense. Their two tackles this time set up a wall. Well, look like, Paul, they've uh, finally figured out the, that, deep, that offense, and they're starting to stack it up in the middle and you know, stop the pit running game from being able to run right at them. Second and 10. And that Miami secondary wrangles the best in America, inciting this crowd to create some more. Busted play, down goes Ryan. All over it. The backs went to the left side. Ryan turned, and there to greet him was James Burgess. <laughs> Miami was coming with a blitz, and uh, the Panthers had a, a busted play. The back went the wrong way, and Ryan was uh, the sacrificial lamb. Big hit by James Ryan. James Burgess, excuse me, got me excited finally. It's third and 15 with 2:20 remaining. Remember, Miami has two timeouts left, leading 10 to 6. Dukes and West. Dukes shift. It's West. Needs a block, gets it. Up to the 20, not near enough for the first down. Again on the play of five yards. And Pitt will kick it out of there. And Miami may have taken that timeout. 
And yes, Miami, they have. Miami took time out. They'd like to get the ball. They've got a chance to get it in good field position, put some more points on the board. But I tell you, Paul, Billy West, you have to like this kid. He, he hits that hole like a dart. In this day began, Miami was on top of the Big East standings. In fact, in three years in this conference, they have lost but one game that came a year ago to West Virginia. Right now at 4-0, and, and Pittsburgh, as mentioned, its only win over Temple. Boston College today facing Syracuse and all over the Orangemen. And Hennings Club, after dropping its first two, really turned things around there. Chestnut Hill. And Dan is a, is a quality coach, and you, you expected to see him turn that Boston College program around. And, Look forward to seeing them come in here against the Hurricanes uh, into the year. Cochran to German. He starts right, comes back to the left side. Now across the 40. A 40-yard kick, a clutch kick off the foot of Cochran. Miami with 145 remaining and that four-yard return by German. Like a dervish whirling around. I tell you. Well, started at 42. Jamie, Jamie German must have more changes of direction for four yards than, than uh, anybody I know. I tell you what, this kid is exciting. I just like to see him get off to the races once without having to reverse his field four or five times. Now Frank Costa has suffered two interceptions in the first half. And now he'll be throwing here in this situation. One timeout in his pocket. Instead, he keeps it on the ground. Al Shipman. Al Shipman with speed to the outside. 40, 35, 30 and out of bounds. That's the secret weapon there, Paul. Al Shipman, smallest back on the field, but great speed. Very good at picking his way. Just a little draw as you see him jump over the pile and then watch him turn on the speed as he changes, changes the ball to the left hand, get the ball outside so they can't be stripped away. A gain of 27. It is Anthony Dorsett back into the game from the secondary, forced to make the tackle. And that storm has arrived. It is raining hard, and the wind is gusting in all directions. Here comes the blitz. The blitz is on for Castro. Miami picks it up, and it is caught in slipping the tackle. Ten, five, touchdown Miami and Trent Jones. Good, tough running by Trent Jones. Miami did a good job of picking up the blitz. Frank got the ball in Trent Jones's hands, and Trent broke tackle and was able to get into the end zone. The freshman, number six, is good for six. And in two snaps, here's another Miami look at it. Miami does a score. good job of picking up the blitz here. Watch Trent Jones, little man with a lot of strength, just shake the tackler and gets into the end zone. A 31-yard completion. Costa to Jones. The rain blowing in sheets as Pruitt definitely adds the extra point. It's kind of fitting that as the rains come, the hurricanes erupt. <laughs> the man full of symbolism and poetry. 17 to 6. There's another look at Trent Jones. His second receiving touchdown this season for the freshman. And he gets a big hug from Ray Lewis. Here's another look at uh, Trent Jones as he comes across the field. Now watch the strength as he keeps his legs churning and he goes into the end zone, showing that speed. Miami speed. Thad Culpepper, number 24, had him wrapped up and Jones slippery. Went wet. Able to get out of there. Weather only Sebastian could enjoy. In a fit night out for Man or Beast. And the Johnny's having to bundle up. It took Miami better than a quarter and a half to begin to put things together. Trailing once, three to nothing, leading at the end of the first quarter, seven to three. And at one point, a seven to six game. Miami has scored twice in the final three minutes of this first half. The field goal by Pruitt of 25 yards. And now the 31 yard catch and scamper by Trent Jones. We'll have all the highlights for you from the first two quarters coming up at the break. 
I wonder how Joe Rose is faring down there, Matt. Uh, Joe's is, a, is an old-time dolphin. He fares weather, fares, fares well in water. He's flipping around. Here's Pruitt. He may kick this one to Oklahoma. This one is going to Mexico City, friends. There's about a 40 to 45 mile an hour wind at his back. Going into our broadcast booth here, too. Away goes the kick. And uh, not quite to Oklahoma, but five yards deep into the end zone. A pick will have to begin first and 10 at its 20 yard line. Another look at that scoring drive, but uh, yes, two plays. The run by Al Shipman and the Trent Jones TD reception. 17 6, Hurricane. That's for the string, the quick strike ability that the Hurricane fans are used to seeing, Paul. And I guess the, you know, we had all the fans sitting up back on their hands because Pitt was doing a good job of shutting them out earlier. And we finally got the crowd into the ball game. Billy West for five. A hard shot off the left side. A little lead back, too, provided by Maurice Washington. And the clock rolls. Less than a minute remaining. Coming up at the half, a look at the first two quarters statistically, and we'll review all the scoring plays of this Big East matchup. Well, we told you there'd be rain, but uh, well, we gave you more than you bargained for. The hurricane being attended to there, Baraka Short helped off the field, and he'll go now trotting off. It's Hurricane homecoming, and the afloats are going to be doused. Friend of Bernie Kozar, by the way, former Hurricane great. Honored here today, earlier. 11 in a row at homecoming, 15 of the last 16. And Miami hasn't lost to an unranked opponent since 1984. A long time since Boomer came in here with Miami, or Maryland, rather. Nothing for West. Pitt content to kill the clock. Just let it roll, 30 seconds. And uh, Miami is not, though. Dennis Erickson, looking like a sea captain on the bridge, calls timeout with 30 seconds remaining. Miami will take the football back. You never know, in this weather, Pitt may put it on the ground. Timeout Miami, it's third timeout. It appeared, Matt, just a few minutes ago, like this was going to be a old 10-6 football game at, at intermission. And uh, Erickson has used his timeouts, right? The momentum has changed. A couple of big plays, Costa back on the money, and here's Miami as the rains come still, not satisfied with the score at this point. Well, they've, they've probably got some emotion into the ball game, Paul. You know, they're playing with a little bit more emotion, and you know they're excited now. The rains have come, and you know they've made a couple big plays, and that's what usually happens. You need someone to step up to the table, make a big play, so everyone get excited, and, and then you're on go. Now you see the Hurricane football team offensively and defensively coming after them, and uh, you know they're not satisfied with that 17-6 lead at, at this point. Singing in the rain. It must be nice to be young. <laughs> 31 ticks of the clock remaining, third down and three. Now Miami cannot stop the clock again, but uh, hoping that they can cause the turnover. West out to the 30-yard line, and then he takes the big shot. Laid out on the hit by Malcolm X Pearson. Watch this. You like this? X marks the spot. Yeah, here you see Chris Patton coming wide open. And, uh, here comes Malcolm Pearson. Big hit. You know, when you look at those kind of hits in the film room, everybody wants to see which way the, the, the offender goes. If you can knock him backwards, that's a knockout. Pitt's going to head to the dressing room. Well, they've earned some respect here in the first quarter. West, by the way, has rushed for 102 yards in the first half. The Panthers have hung in the game. It's 17-6, though. Miami 
in firm command of this one. A rainy homecoming in the Orange Bowl. Coming up, our stats and our highlights from the first two periods. When we return after this time out on Sunshine. The Miami Hurricane. field goal set to put his foot into it but with a 25 uh, yarder official a couple of extra points here we go we're underway in the third very short kick Jones on the run from the 14 20 look at the daylight 30 40 45 out of bounds 47 yard line that is why that young man as we mentioned earlier ranks third in the Big East and returning kicks Jay's quite a talent here you see the, the, the shortness of the kick is what really eludes to such a big play. It's, he's catching the ball on almost the 20-yard line. He just does a good job of reading his blockers and getting upfield and off to the races. A return of 33, and Al Shipman, who had a huge play at the end of the first half. He ran that draw deep into pit territory to set up Trent Jones touchdown he made the tackle John Ryan at quarterback from his 46 officially West as he did in the first half works his way for five six seven yards James Burgess on the stop Billy West the sophomore with the carry there and here the possession chart net for Pitt well, Pitt uh, basically scored on the two turnovers, but other than that, they've uh, six and out, 11 and out, and, and the, the 11 and out was the one where they drove the ball down and came away with nothing because of the penalties. But overall, they've done a good job of not hurting themselves offensively. Ryan dispatches Davis and Joe. Top two target. The bottom of your screen. But gets it to West. West for the first down marker is close to it before he is bulldogged into the bench by Wilson, the corner, and Kennard Lang, the right end over there. Lang, Sapp, Riley, and Holmes, the front wall. Wilson and Jones on the corner, Richardson, Pearson in the backfield, Burgess, Lewis, Russell, the linebacking core, and now right at 100 yards for Billy West for the fifth time this season on a team that has won but two games but every ball club knows what your best weapon is. West has still managed to get it done. Well, you've got to give him a lot of credit there, Paul, but you've got to give that offensive line also a lot of credit because they do a good job of coming off the ball, moving the defender back. Senior, Lawson Bullock of the center. Anchoring it and snapping it. West needed a yard. I don't think he no. got it. That front wall was there. Lang. Sap, Riley, and take your choice. Sap had a half dozen tackles in the first half, here, here. as did Pat Riley. Here you see uh, Ray Lewis stepping up in there along with Sap and Lang and everybody and just pushing it back. Even had D. Johnson, Dwayne Johnson in there. You see the 78 and white, Reuben Brown that he forced back. Eris Sap, fourth down and needing a yard. Pitt will go for it. 17 to 6. And Miami may have jumped. Was Holmes drawn offside? Or did he go on his own volition? That's the call for John Smith. Dead ball. Offsides. Caves. First down pit. Go back, take a look. We see Kenny Holmes drawn offside by the hard snap count by John Ryan. Uh, good job of the pit offensive line sitting in there on that hard snap count, pulling Miami offsides. Get the first down. Reuben Brown at 305, Tony Orlandino at 275. The two tackles for the Panthers. Reggie Thomas 260, Jeff Craig 280. The two guards. Molica, as mentioned, tips the scale at close to 280. West for three more, and the clock runs. Miami has not surrendered a touchdown now in 17 quarters. And that to a Big East foe. But Pitt trying to pound that ball further downfield if they could somehow manage to get the first touchdown against Miami in a long while against Coach McMacken's defensive unit. They'd be right back in this football game. 
Well, I, I don't see Miami at this point uh, continuing to let them run the ball up the field and control the football. I think in the second half, at the end of the first half, they sort of got on the right track, and you know now they they're going to come after them. You know, before they were sitting back on their heels, and the Pitt team was just driving them off the football. Billy Davis. Billy Davis was the intended target from Ryan. That pass high and a bit behind him, and even the talented Davis could not make the catch. But you know, when you're in a ball game of this nature, Paul, you, you as a receiver, you've got to come down and make some great catches to help the young, help the quarterback out. Uh, you know, that was a catchable ball. It was a tough catch, but it's one a great receiver sometime will come up in the big ball game and make. Count the receivers for the bottom of your screen, and the fifth one up top is Askew. Batted down, but caught again by the quarterback, Ryan, and then down he goes. Kenny Holmes deflected the pass off the arm of Ryan. John then caught the football and was dumped in his backfield. My leg. What a wacky play this is. Here you see Kenny Holmes getting pressure, goes as far as he can, jumps up, bats the ball down, and just instinct is what made John Ryan decide to catch the football and run with it where he'd have been better served to just let it hit the ground. Jamie German awaits the punt off the foot of Nate Cochran, who showed us his worth to this pit ball club, kicking so effectively in the first half. Here just trying to pooch it, let it bound, perhaps take a pit bounce, but it doesn't, and it will be down at the 25-yard line. Miami in possession of the lead and the football with 11.30 showing on the third quarter clock and a very wet orange bowl in Miami. Our yours truly, Paul Kennedy, Joe Rose. Out on the field tonight, Miami taking over for the first time in the second half as Frank Costas sets three receivers. And a single back behind him on first and 10 from his 25-yard line. Go, baby, go. And they'll give it to Stewart. James Stewart got out of bounds at the 26-yard line, maybe a yard. It was a frustrating first two quarters for the talented Stewart. Held to only 17 yards rushing in this football game. This is a guy who uh, has rushed for better than 600 on the year now. Oh, he, he wasn't getting the hole, so you got to give Pittsburgh some credit, but he also wasn't running with that reckless abandon. Uh, he wasn't really lowering the shoulder and running through people in the first half, and let's see if he can get it started here in the second half. Trent Jones, along with Chris T. Jones, a couple of Joneses as Trent goes in motion at the top of the pitcher for Costa, who's going to go up top. Frank has time. He hits Trent. Same play that they scored on. They end the first half, and this one carries out across the 40 to the 43. How dangerous is this freshman? A gain of 16 for Costin. Dorsett, Sumner, who had seven tackles for Pittsburgh, the free safety, David. On the stop there. There's Anthony Dorsett shaken up, and he comes back into the game. You see Miami scoring on its last two possessions in the final four minutes of what was a tight first half of play. New first down, back goes Costa. Three-step drop, four-step drop, throws, and a Great sliding catch. grab Great right at the 40-yard line. Hello, Great Jonathan catch. Harris. Little jig after he finished it. On a wet field, a pickup of 16. Let's see if we can take another look at that. Hopefully, we've got a shot at it. You'll see Jonathan Harris coming across the field. He does a good job of locating the ball and to watch him get his body down on the football, get his hands between the ball and the ground, coming up with a sliding catch. Great catch by Jonathan Harris. His second reception of this football game is Costa has thrown to seven different receivers at homecoming. Spread the ball around. That he is. And the senior from Philadelphia in his final homecoming game takes the snap and will keep it on the ground. And Stewart for a couple. Tyler Young, junior right tackle, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, number 92, among others that was there. Costa ready to work again. Pitts walking up 
Again, a five, six-man front. Daring Costa to throw, and he does. He swings it out against the blitz to Stewart. And he can't gain anything. He's driven into the sideline once again. Jason Chavis, number 58, pushed him over there. North set two. Again, there is Pitt walking all those men up to the line of scrimmage. They're walking, walking them up, and they're bringing the outside linebacker and Derek Miami to try and run it or throw it. And, and, and the thing that I keep watching when I look at James Stewart is he's very tentative. You know, here, normally you would see him just run through the defender, and you just don't see him running with that reckless abandon. And I wonder if that ankle is still bothering him. This is uh, second catch of this game for Stewart. In trouble at the 50. Back to his 45. Gets a block. Here's downfield. Guns for German in the end zone, and it's nearly intercepted. He overshot German. And there was Jenkins. John Jenkins, the free safety. Well, Frank showed a lot of athletic ability there and a lot of strength kicking out of the would-be tackler's hand and avoiding the big sack, but... You know, this was a dangerous pass here. Once again, uh, he throws it into coverage. Here you see him just do a good job. Shows a lot of poise. Picks up his blockers as he comes back around, and then he tries to go deep to Jamie German. Just an overthrow. Could have been intercepted. And Pitt is going to call timeout. Timeout Pitt as Miami was set to punt. Pruitt was on to kick it. So Pittsburgh uses its first of three timeouts in the second half. And when we return, we will see if indeed Dave Pruitt doesn't put his football into it in South Florida. A reserve quarterback Ryan Clement, number 17, had slipped into the formation. You see him as an up back next to Pruitt. The snap, though, does truly come back to Pruitt. Fair catch called for. The ball bounds at the seven-yard line. Takes a hurricane bounce, and Miami will pin Pitt inside its own 10-yard line. Nice kick by Pruitt. He accomplishes exactly what he wanted to do. Willie Phillips, number 55, downs the 31-yard effort. Can't do it much better than that. Especially for a place kicker that turned punter uh, when Mike Chrissy went out with the uh, pool growing. That was a great moment here when, uh, unfortunately, when Chrissy went down, Pruitt came on against Virginia Tech in his first punt in years, sailed 49 yards. Here, the little pooch effort, much like you might hit a nine iron high and get it to land softly, even had the backspin to it. Raises his hands like he's been doing it all his life. Like it went in the cup. So back into the closed end of the stadium, Pitt can hear the sound of the crowd that remains here. We'll have to cover better than 90 yards to find the end zone, and the handoff will cost him some yards. It's Ray Lewis who drops Chris Patton in the Panther backfield, and it's a loss on the play of a couple. It's not three. Ray Lewis does a better job than any linebacker in college football of running through, knowing when to come through and when to go around the tackle to make the make the hit. There you see they do a good job of running through it catching West in the backfield. At the end of the first half, Pittsburgh was unable to get the ball off its own end zone, and it ended up surrendering a touchdown following a punt. And it's important here for the Panthers that they sustain something, or Miami will punch another seven on the board. Again, it is Patton, pinballed around by that Miami defensive front wall, and that includes Kenny Holmes, the sophomore left in, and Corin Francis, the only senior linebacker for Miami. On the field, number 58. Good job. Good job of that front four. Just stacking it up there inside. Uh, Patton bounces in there. Boom. He's popped out. And here you see the rest of the Hurricane Bunch coming in to make the tackle there. You see Holmes and Francis coming in to finish him off. Good job of gang tackling by the Hurricane defense. To this point, Johnny Majors has been content on third and very long to run the ball and kick it away. What does he do in the third? He keeps it on the ground. And Patton. Nearly slipped out of there, didn't he? He, uh, he ran through an arm tackle and got tripped up, but he had a lot of room in front of him. Oh, might still be running. Well, here, too, Majors will play it close to the vest. Pitt will punt and rely on its defense. The whole Miami Bay. It's three and out for Pittsburgh, and that Kane defense gets a nice hand. Well, that's good smart football by Johnny Majors. You, you know, you're in the third quarter. You're only down by 11 points, and you, know, you don't want to do anything to just blow yourself out of the ball game. 
Nate Cochran. A good time to match that earlier 60-yard effort. Picking the Jamie German. A high snap. He has time. Boots it away, and he got out of this one. His fifth putt of the day is a great one. German starts dancing around like he, like, like he likes to do. And gets about three out of it. Very dangerous. The right. punt sails 48 yards out of his own end zone for Cochran. I'll tell you, Jamie German is a very exciting runner, but I'd like to see him catch the football, make a move, and go north and south. He, he reverses his field so many times, there's just no way he can run off and leave the defenders. Costa just now arriving at the huddle. At his own 44-yard line. Single setback in the form of Stewart. Three receivers. Opportunity for Frank. Play action. Stands and throws very, very deep. Down the boundary, and it's incomplete at the 10-yard line. Christy Jones wanted pass interference, but again, Dorsett, as he had done in the first half, was all over Jones and legally, too, with him every step of the way. Well, let's go back and see if we can catch this right at the end. But once again, you see it's that the jump ball. You know, Miami has been able to take advantage of their big receivers throwing the ball up for grabs and them just out leaving, out leaping the smaller cornerbacks. But as you see, Dorsett did a good job of leaping up there and stripping him, make sure he didn't come down with the catch. Dorsett's played outside linebacker. He's played cornerback as he's doing now. They also used him at wide receiver. Inside handoff. Here comes Danielle Ferguson, who owns a touchdown in this game. And he scoots it out across midfield and six, seven yards into pit territory. Gate on the play of 12. Well, we've seen uh, Danielle Ferguson, Larry Jones, James Stewart, Al Schiffman. You know, you're talking about a stable of good backs where these guys just don't get enough playing time. Here you see Danielle Ferguson doing a good job of reading his blocks, getting upfield for the first down. And this is probably his only third or fourth carry of the whole ball game. Oval James, the athletic director at Pitt, stepping into our booth. One of the class gentlemen of college athletics. Get to visit with him after this one. His team's played well. Like Costa throws. He has it complete for seven, eight yards. Jonathan Harris. Got to the far side. Good throw and catch by Costa to Jonathan Harris there for you young receivers. You see Jonathan Harris did a good job of keeping his eyes on the football. Let's see if we can get a, a replay of it. Costa goes back. And as you can see, he doesn't catch it the first time. He sort of double catches it. But because he keeps his eyes on it, he's able to come down with the grab. You've got to look the ball into your hands as a receiver. Harris, his numbers entering this game. Acosta has thrown for 243 yards already in this contest. Stewart with a nice move to earn the first down. Well, he looked as if he would turn it up earlier and then cut it a little dip further outside. He's very uh, indecisive about how he wants to run today. You know, he starts it up, he's setting up the block, then he goes outside. But even there, you don't see him really just deliver the blow. You know, he's taking the blow much more today than you're normally used to seeing James Stewart take. So Miami holding on to the football here, leading 17 to six with five and a half minutes. Remaining in the third quarter, driving on pit. Here comes the fifth play of this possession. A three-step drop, Costa guns, and it's caught. And falling immediately at the 27-yard uh, line is Jonathan Harris. The footing's held up pretty good on the Rose Bowl, that despite that uh, really a deluge that we had just part of the half. Orange Bowl, Orange Bowl. We're in say? the Orange Bowl, not the Rose Bowl. Did Penn I say the Rose Bowl? Where did that come from? Think, forget about Penn State. Where but, did that, uh, that Yeah, this field is a, a great field. I played on it uh, for many, many years, not only in high school and college and pros, but, you know, the ability to suck that water out when the rain comes keeps the field pretty dry. I mean, I was thinking of uh, Penn State and Illinois. The Illini are all over it. No Paterno's ball club today, which, of course, is to Miami's advantage as Stewart carries once again. You know, if Penn State does indeed fall, and by now our viewers know what has happened there, it sets up Nebraska and Miami here for the national crowd if Miami goes and wins on out. 
Right. Uh, as you see, James Stewart coming off. Looked like he sort of re-injured that uh, ankle, you know, which I questioned earlier if he wasn't having some problems because he just wasn't running tough and aggressive the way we're used to seeing him run. But, uh, you know, if uh, Penn State, getting back to what you're talking about, is able to, to uh, oh, Illinois is able to hold on against Penn State, it'll really make that, uh, that game on New Year's Day with Nebraska and Miami if they can continue to win a big one. One of the reasons Miami is leading in this game, they've converted four of seven opportunities on third down. They managed to hold on to the football if not scored. On the reverse here to German. German through one tackle. German with speed around the second would be tackler. German for the first down. Earns it. No, he doesn't. He's shy of it. Stepped out of bounds, a yard shy of it. But this may be four down territory. Four down territory, but let's give Pitt a lot. Let's give Pitt a lot of credit because you know they're not full. You know the guys are staying at home, and there you see Moody once again staying at home, forcing him deep, keeping him from getting the first down on third down. German with blazing speed still could not get outside the Panthers. Derek Harris will check in. As an extra blocking back, Chris T. Jones will depart. German breaks out of the huddle and heads this way. And on the wing, there's the bullish Harris. Larry Jones, the single setback. Play action, Costa. Throws, and it's incomplete on fourth down. He was throwing to Sae Tucker rather than keeping the ball on the ground. And Pitt holds on. Well, he had him wide open there, Paul, but he just was a little late in getting it to him. He, he popped open early, but Costa had a defender in his face, and he wasn't able to get the ball off on uh, proper timing. First down. Chuck Driesbach, the defensive coordinator of Pitt, has done a marvelous job for Johnny Majors. And the defensive line coach, get this, Tom Terchetta was a Hurricane MVP when he played as an undergraduate back in 1971. Now, don't you know this game means so much to him? Terchetta, Chuck Griesbeck, they've done a great job. Look at the pit staff. A well-coached unit that arrives here today. 17-6, still Miami in command, but Pitt has the football. And on first down, Pitt will keep it on the ground, and that's Vince Williams toting the ball for the first time today. Lewis and Francis from the linebacking court on the stop. Our first look at Williams as a ball carry. It was Curtis Martin who was supposed to be the star of the show for Pittsburgh. He rushed for 251 yards on opening day against the University of Texas, but wouldn't you know it, he got hurt. And that gave Billy West an opportunity, and West has made the most of that. Martin is not returning, may redshirt at the end of this year. Anytime you lose a star or your number one player, it's great to have a Billy West sitting in the wings with the opportunity to pick up the slack. Close to the first down, and Vince Williams may have it. So Majors goes deeper into his depth chart and calls upon the junior from Lynchburg, Virginia. And the tradition-rich program in the Commonwealth of Virginia, E.C. Glass. It's a great high school program, and that's where Williams is from. Little power eyes. You see the uh, Pitt team go into their blood and guts offense. You know, they're just basically going to play uh, roughhouse football. Well, it is a first down for Pittsburgh. And just as importantly, the Panthers get that clock to move again. They have played uh, the Hurricanes net on even turns here in the third quarter. 17 to 6 was our score at the end at uh, intermission. And that's where we stand here. Well, if you take away that last touchdown at the end of the half, uh, you know, you've got a very close ball game. You're talking a 10-6 ball game where Pitt's in position to win. Reuben Brown, the tackle, looks to be lined up in the backfield. And he is. Look at 78 come out of there. <laughs> they have taken the, the tackle and put 78 in the backfield as a blocking back. Is Pitt. This is uh, the University of Pittsburgh's idea of smash mouth football. You take your best blocker, line him up at, at uh, fullback, and just try and hit Ray Lewis in the mouth. That would be like taking Richmond Webb of the Hurricanes and putting him in the backfield. This time, more conventionally, lines it up. Second down. 
What a look that was. That gives you some reason to ponder. On second down. Again, the ground game, and here comes West. Perhaps Weston. He makes a miss. Somehow he fights through arms and shoulders and is across the 40, out to the 41-yard line. Kennard Lang on the stuff. And Billy West, let's say this uh, with the tip of the cap, is doing this, this better than 100-yard rushing performance against one of the finest defensive units ever to play the college game. Uh, Greg McMacken, the coordinator, says it's better than a professional unit he had in the USFL. So West deserves a medal as does his offensive line for what has happened today. Sap on the stop this time. There's a pause in the action. We step aside here on Sunshine. Stop by Sap at Francis. The Miami Hurricanes. Nobody plays better than they do. And nobody but nobody covers the Canes better than Canesport. 21 times a year, Canesport takes you inside the locker room and inside the coaches' minds for the most comprehensive coverage anywhere. Each issue brings you complete game analysis, exciting action photos, and more. To order Canesport, call 1-800-635-CANE. Or by mail, send 3195 to Canesport, Miami, Florida. Canesport. Don't miss an issue. Order now. I've got no place to go. My family was shot down by undercover cops. When you need a professional on your side... Bullet slide on you. You're indestructible. He is the best there is. From the celebrated director of La Femme Nikita. The professional rated R. At theaters Friday. It's been said Jeep Cherokee sport owners have a unique way of looking at things. Well, maybe if you enjoyed 190 horses, available four-wheel anti-lock brakes, and a driver's airbag, you'd have a different outlook, too. Or perhaps it's just the values they got on the classic Jeep Cherokee sport. Get into one today and change your whole perspective. See your Florida Jeep and Eagle dealer. This is Mary Ann Barnacle. She and her family were attacked by a silent killer in their home. It was at that time when my husband was passing out, my heart was racing, my dad was having chest pain, and, and my children were irritable that I figured something was, was wrong. The Barnacles are among the thousands of people in the U.S. poisoned by carbon monoxide each year. Nearly 300 die. To protect your family from carbon monoxide poisoning, Make sure appliances are installed properly and operated safely. Examine vents and chimneys for rust and loose connections. Have your heating system inspected every year by a qualified technician and install carbon monoxide detectors that meet the new UL standard. Never burn charcoal indoors. Never use a gas range or oven to heat the house. Never operate fuel burning appliances in a closed room and never run a car in a closed attached garage. On fourth down, Pitt has elected to kick it out of there. For the sixth time, averaging well above 40 yards per effort, Nate Cochran, the sophomore. Good kick, boy, a three-wood. It bounds at the five, scoots into the end zone, and will be brought out to the 20-yard line. This young man can punt. And he's got a from Florence, South Carolina. He's got an excellent leg ball, and now you understand even more so why Johnny Majors is playing close to the vest. You know, they had bad field position. Now they have regained field position with the strength of their punter's leg, and they've got an opportunity where Miami turns the ball over now. They're in Miami territory. As Miami takes over, we invite you to join the professional ranks of uh, football in this area, the Miami Dolphins Monday Night Magazine. On Monday, we'll come your way. Troy Vincent, James Saxon, Terry Ross, the host. And the upcoming schedule for these two teams, you see the Miami with Temple and Boston College lying in store, hoping to win out. The University of Pittsburgh with the one game to go, and that is Rutgers. And there, as mentioned, the Canes and the Owls on pay-per-view. A new quarterback for the University of Miami. 
A man who started the matchup a year ago with Pitt, Ryan Collins, has come onto the football field for the first time today to take over for Costa. Collins, a year ago, a very mobile, versatile guy, threw four touchdowns against the University of Pittsburgh. 173 yards in all as the Kings bombarded the Panthers. Well, he's in there now with 11 seconds to go in the third. Your thoughts now? Young man with a lot of class and character. Uh, lost his job in the uh, spring and has uh, sat in there and waited patiently, waiting on his opportunity to play. And, you know, that's what you got to have to have a good football team. Guys that are willing to work together and, you know, not worry about themselves. And here you see James Stewart now running with some authority. Perhaps that sore ankle stopped throbbing a bit. He races for 13. Get some ice on it. Nova King, Anthony Dorsett made another tackle. Dorsett playing sideline to sideline. I can only imagine what it must be like to uh, to carry that name under the spotlight, huh? You carry it with pride. He was a great prepster in Texas. A lot of pride, but a lot of expectations when your dad is Tony Dorsett. Time remaining in the third. And a 17 to 6 affair. Collins cranks German Halls. German uh, across the 40 up to the 43. The gun sounds. That's it. Dorsett on the tackle. We head to the fourth. Miami is 15 minutes away from winning again. Leading 17 to 6 here in South Florida. Skyline of Miami. A little more hospitable now than it was when that thunderstorm arrived at the half. We head to the fourth quarter. Nat Moore, Paul Kennedy, and Joe Rose down on the sidelines. We'll give you the numbers from the first three quarters in just a moment. The big number that matters here, though, for Miami, Ryan Collins is in at quarterback. Stewart had the big game a moment ago. Now stumbling as he tries to come around the near right side. That'll only cost him yards. You know, Pitt is thinking, hey, one turnover. Just give us a turnover. We'll get right back in this 17-6 game. Here are the numbers. You see surprisingly even in a number of departments with the fact that to Miami, though, with better than 300 yards of total offense, and Acosta's uh, thrown for 250. But I, I think the important number is the time of possession. You look at Pitt has 25 minutes and 38 seconds where they have controlled the football. And kept that offense off the field. This man has taken 17 of his 27 teams to bowl games, says Johnny Majors. My friend's one of the great coaches ever in this game. He has Pitt ready to play tonight. Collins dancing around. Now on Lowe's. And he's got it caught. First down, Miami. Trent Jones has had a huge football game. And he carries this ball inside the 35, a gain of 26. There we saw great patience on the part of Ryan Collins as he uncovered himself from inside with the big offensive or defensive lineman. There you see finding room. He steps back inside and he waits and he hits Trent Jones clearing behind the linebacker. What a game for little number six. His third reception of this contest and all have been big play. 31, 16, and now 26 yards. And in motion, Jonathan Harris to the top of your screen. Collins looks to throw. Bing flush, rolls right, peers downfield, and now scampers out of bounds. Nearly took uh, an official with him. Chased to the sideline by Pitts, Jimmy Williams from the secondary, the sophomore. That play looked kind of screwy there. It looked like they were trying to set up a middle screen, but uh, was never able to get it set up. Here you see everybody comes in and they're trying to run a screen into the, I think that was the tight end, but it never developed. So Ryan Collins did the smart thing as much as he can get out of bounds. Second down and 11, four man front. Pitt to this point has been very selective when it has blitzed. You see here playing a very base defense. In motion, the dangerous Jones. They throw to him when he goes in motion. Collins looking at him all the way. Now comes off at him. And German has a oh, nearly interception. Nearly disaster for Miami. Dorsett stays on his feet. Dorsett is sayonara. He is gone. Well, that's what the uh, Pitt defense is playing for. They're waiting on Miami to make a mistake. And Miami came close there. Ryan Collins threw it out. He had it a little bit outside of Jamie German and Jamie batted it up in the air and you know here we see he almost come up with the interception the INT for a touch big leg whip 
A kick save and a beauty, as they'd say for John <laughs> Van Beesbrook, for prevented Dorsett from catching that ball and racing 70 yards. Third and 11. Here comes the blitz. After Collins. It's batted into the air, and this time it is picked up. Pitt has the football. Hayes Clark, the linebacker, earns the football, and Pitt has the turnover it needed. Pitt with the football off Clark's interception. Clark with his first INT of the year, the fifth-year senior. Here you see just Blitzer come free, bats it up in the air, and Clark does a good job of uh, catching the football. Ryan Collins comes down with the tackle. Only thing you can do in that situation. Look to be David Sumner. We got a hand on that football as the tip. El Pitt is in business, trailing 17 to 6 in the dangerous West. Scoops to midfield, 45 40. West inside the 40 and down to the 38 yard line. How much petroleum can he have left in that engine? He has carried the ball more than 25 times in this game, and there he gains 19. He's going to take a well-deserved blow on the sideline. Well, he's got very deceptive speed, but he has the ability to get outside, and he's, he runs with a little jump where you can't seem, to, can't seem to put the hat on him clean, but I'll tell you what, he's one good running back. One of the great performances ever against Miami. Truly an outstanding effort. Look out, Warren Sapp. Hello, buddy. In the backfield and all over, Pat. That's why Warren Sapp is a finalist for the Lombardi Award. And many believe he ought to win the Heisman. Let's look, as good as it gets. Let's look at the big guys there. As you see, Warren Sapp just breaks loose, and you know, we keep raving about what a great player he is, but you know, every time there's time to make a big play, he steps to the table. Warren Sapp, what a future. Major League and professional. Austin, two on the play, second and 12 at the Miami 40-yard line for Pitt. Three-step drop. Throwing caught 30-yard line and paying the price. Two yards shy of the first down. Wilson with the big hit on the play as tall Chad Askew at 6-4 was a big target. The senior and Ryan found it. I, th I think Wilson uh, made a good hit here and the ball comes loose. As you see, Ray Lewis comes in. Boom. Ball pops out, but uh, I think they ruled him down before the ball came out. An injured Panther lineman being attended to. And the clock is stopped. And as Johnny Majors frets about his player and ponders strategy, we'll step aside. You see the score in this fourth quarter. To six, Miami. But Pitt is putting something together. The ball is at the Kane 30 yard line. Here is the catch made a moment ago by Askew. He was down when it came free. The injured player, though, away from the ball, the young freshman tackle, Tony Orlandini. He's been replaced by Matt Bloom, our senior. Big snap here. Snap of the game thus far for Pitt. Do you give it to West? No question. He has the football. I don't know that he has the first down. The men in orange were uh, guessing just like you, Mr. Moore, saying uh, check number 20. I know number 20 is still shy of the uh, first down marker. They always say you go with the horse that got you there, and Billy West has done a tremendous job here today. Why don't we take number 78, Reuben Brown, the left tackle, and put him back there? See if they do that this time. You see the big guy in brown, top of your picture, and Francis on the stop that time. I said we put him back there and give him the football. <laughs> Fourth down. This game has been a whole lot better than anybody thought it was going to be with the exception of perhaps Johnny Major. Well, we got Reuben Brown at the fullback slot. There he is going his way. Follow the house. Miami shows the blitz. Timeout Pittsburgh. 
And the linebacker Ray Lewis walked up there and Ryan blinked. He says, I'm going to the sideline. And what's critical too, Pitt has used two of its three timeouts. Seventeen to six Miami as Pittsburgh with less than 13 minutes to go and inside the Kane 30 faces fourth and one. Having called the timeout here's the play. And a yes Mr. Moore the big house in Reuben number 78 remains on the backfield Does West get it he needs a yard for the first. No they give it to the big guy and the big guy has the first down. Matt, they read your mind. Reuben Brown carries for the first down. And uh, did he carry? He, he ran over tacklers or would-be tacklers like there were no tomorrow. This is every lineman's dream. You know, the fridge of college football, as you see Reuben Brown trampling over hurricane defenders for a first down. Goodness gracious. You just saw his first career carry. And the first down gain of four. <laughs> what a rushing average. Johnny Majors has pulled it all out this evening. First and 10, trailing 17 to 6. The short drop, Ryan throws boundary, and it is caught. What a catch by Askew. He stands 6 4, and he needed every inch of that to hold on to a highly thrown football. That was just a great catch, great, great adjustment on the ball as the ball was thrown over his head as he reaches back with his left hand and comes down with the catch. Just Great concentration. We remind you, it is 18 quarters now that Miami has not allowed a touchdown. That may be in jeopardy. Pitt on second down following the gain of six. On the counter, here comes West. West for a first down inside the 15 to the 14 yard line. West drives Pitt even deeper. I tell you, Paul, there's no quit in this Panther fo uh, football team. They, you know, they come here to play today, and you know, everybody expected them to come in here and fold, but they're getting after this Hurricane football team, and you know, Miami's got a scare going. The 30th carry of a game for number 20. And 132 of those rushing yards have come out of Billy West. He dots the eye on first down. What a drive this has been for Pitt. Ryan on the snap. Gets it away. Ryan throws, and it's incomplete. Billy Davis, the intended target at the 12-yard line. Warren Sapp was able to apply pressure, though, on the quarterback, Ryan, who's had to use that three-step drop, given the pass-rushing ability of the Hurricane. Well, he's trying to get rid of the ball in a hurry, and Warren Sapp just does such a good job of jumping around the center of the guard, the would-be blocker, and getting in the quarterback face that it's tough to try and get the ball off here. You know, he had him open for a second, yep. but just the fact of having to throw it over Warren Sapp's hands made it an incompleted pass. There were footsteps, too, of Carlos Jones. Venture back is there. Second down and 10 from the 15-yard line. Four receivers to the near side left, one to the right, five out. And a flag is thrown. We may have to lay a game. fucking move. Down. Took Pitt a long time to get that playoff. And in an important situation, and they make the mistake. And five yards down here is like 15 in the middle of the field. Yeah, that's a big mistake. They were down there earlier, and they stopped themselves at the same thing, penalties at crucial times. And, you know, they had some set up there. They had three receivers to the wide side, had an uncovered man, and that's who they were trying to get the ball to on a quick screen. So, you know, they hurt themselves with a delay of game penalty. He's got to get up to the line of scrimmage, get the ball snapped, and execute. The penalty pushes the football out for the 20. Same formation, however, for Pitt. The gun. Contact prior to the ball arriving. No, no flag. Incomplete. Could have had an appearance call there. No, sir, the officials. Chad Askew, the intended target. The Chad Wilson, a couple of Chads meeting. That was just a good break by Chad Wilson reading the quarterback and breaking on the ball. This is just getting there. Perfect timing. Oh, yeah. Perfectly timed by Wilson. The senior made the play. The junior and Ryan now 
third down. 11.20 to go. The ball just inside the 20. Twin receivers to the top of your screen. Three this way into the end zone. Touchdown, Pitt! Touchdown, Billy Davis! The first touchdown in 19 quarters surrendered by the Hurricane defense. That was just an unbelievable play. Miami went to the two-deep zone. The safety split, and Billy West went untouched right down the middle of the field. Quarterback's able to just throw it over the linebacker's head. Safeties can't get there. John Ryan finds the end zone. Pitt calls timeout. It's third and final timeout as they will go for two. You see a happy young quarterback there. Uh, you see John Ryan and uh, quickly motion to the sideline. Coach, don't we want to go for two? Better believe it. We've got a chance to win this thing. Who would have thought this could be any kind of a football game? Heading into the fourth quarter. The two-point play for Pitt. Five receivers once again. Got a penalty. Now the pad, the conversion was good. The little turn in by Davis, but a delay a game. They didn't get it away even with the timeout. The penalty against Pittsburgh. The way of game. Now you have to go and Majors threw his hat. He was so mad at that. Well, I think you still got to go for two because you need a touchdown to, to win the ball game, if not, or to tie. You can't tie the ball game unless you get two. But you know what's, what's amazing here, Paul, is that Miami seems to be confused when Pitt comes out in a five-receiver offense where everybody's split out. They seem to be lost as to where they're supposed to be. Are they in blitz man-to-man -man because Pitt has spread? Look how wide Pittsburgh has spread the field. It's almost as they're playing a zone defense and instead of being man-to-man. -man. Four-man rush and the blitz coming to all-out blitz. And it's incomplete. The conversion does not connect and now we may have a taunting call on Miami. A flag is thrown. Miami's Chad Wilson and the intended receiver on the play were barking at each other. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Miami. That's a tough call at this point. You know, you, you're able to stop them from scoring the two, but now you're going to get the ball and they're going to be kicking off from about the 50 yard line. You saw Chad Wilson get right down in the face of the receiver and bark away right in front of the official. A lot of football remaining to be played here in Miami in a Big East matchup that's turned out to be quite a surprise. by GMAC. It's an affordable way to drive off with a new GM vehicle. And it might even give you something you wouldn't mind carrying around. Journey through the Stargate and discover another world by entering the Stargate sweepstakes. The grand prize is a three-night cruise for four to the Bahamas aboard the Big Red Boat, America's number one family cruise and vacation. Winner and guest will be flown to Orlando via U.S. Air and begin their trip with a day at the Kennedy Space Center. Send your name and address to Sunshine Network and watch November 21st for the live drawing during the Orlando Magic Game. Send in your entry today for a vacation that'll be out of this world. Now playing in theaters everywhere. Billions of years ago, the only place to get a nice gift was the airport. A good meal? The airport. Rent a wheel? The airport. That's why Thrifty Car Rental opened in your neighborhood. Today in Orlando, you can rent the roomy Dodge Caravan for only $29.95 per day when you mention Rate Plan SM. And if you're at the airport, we're in that neighborhood too. Your neighborhood Thrifty Car Rental, historically known for low rates. Rob Muzio is one of the world's top decathletes, placing fifth in the 1992 Summer Games. Rob also has asthma, but he doesn't let that slow him down. To me, dealing with asthma is a 24-hour-a-day thing. I mean, I have it, I have to control it. 
But recent studies indicate that many asthmatics do not obtain the proper medical care to control asthma. As a result, asthma deaths are on the rise in the United States. Last year, approximately 5,000 Americans died from acute asthma attacks. It is tragic that anybody would die of asthma in this day and time because it is a preventable problem. Guidelines issued by the National Institutes of Health recommend that patients with moderate to severe asthma use anti-inflammatory drugs such as inhaled corticosteroids on a daily basis and inhaled bronchodilators for acute attacks. A bronchodilator inhaler gives you a quick fix, but it doesn't get to the root of the problem, which is deep in the lung, the inflammatory reaction. Miami 17, Pittsburgh 22, 12. You put the two scores together and you got the margin that uh, Dennis Erickson's club was favored by. It is homecoming here, but there are not a lot of smiles at the moment. And Johnny Majors, who's done a masterful job with an extra week to prepare for this one, has just seen his team drive 57 yards following its third interception of this game and the fourth turnover it's earned against Miami. And Billy Davis haul in a John Ryan touchdown strike. Yeah, every time Miami's turned the ball over, Paul, it's been a momentum swing, and Pitt's been able to go down and get points out of it. The chopped kickoff. German catches it and runs out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Played right into Pitt's hands. The ball was teed up at midfield because of the uh, unsportsmanlike conduct call against Chad Wilson. So Miami owns the football less than 12 minutes to go. And as Penn State today has avoided disaster and beaten Illinois, now Miami is going to try and do the same thing. Although Penn State had to come from behind to win. Miami now trying to hold off a young, hungry bunch of kids from Pittsburgh who can make a season with one more turnover and one more score. Collins, who took over for Costa. Turns and hands it. And they keep it on the ground. And still bulldogging along. That's Al Shipman. Full of fighting him, huh? Let's check in with Joe Rose. Paul, we not only have a tired defense, but a very frustrated defense. As Dad mentioned earlier, they go from a strong running game, flex out extra wide receivers, and get a very confused Miami defense. That's what caused the touchdown. Back to you. This is a pit program that's had a lot of pride through the years. You know, Mike Ditka played there, Marty Schottenheimer, a Dave Wanstead who brings the Bears in to play the Dolphins tomorrow at Joe Robbins Stadium. They've been off. They've been struggling as of late, but they have a chance to really make a statement here in the Orange Bowl. A lot of tradition, a lot of history with that pit uh, program, and you know, even though they're struggling the last few years, you know, Johnny Majors is the type of coach that if anybody can turn it around, he will. Trent Jones, career day for him so far. His fifth catch. And this one. He had Hugh Green play for him. 50 sacks for Green in his Panther career. Tony Dorsett, better than 6,000 yards rushing. And after him, after Majors left, a Dan Marino, quarterback of some note, threw for 75 career touchdowns for the Panthers. I guess he's pretty good. Pretty good. Majors went to his alma mater, Tennessee, for 16 years, won the SEC a number of times, and now returns. It is first down for Collins. Al Shipman, the running back. Four receivers in the pattern. Out of the gun. Five-man rush. Collins chase. Collins against the grain. Tucks, turns, and runs upfield. And into the pit sideline. Good job of scrambling there out to the 35-yard line. Well, that's the one thing that Ryan Collins give you. If you come with the blitz, he can he can do something on his own where he gets outside and can pick up a little extra yardage. Here you see he sees the blitz coming, and he gets out of it. He doesn't wait for everything to crash down on him, and he just gets as much as he can and then gets out of bounds. That's what he brings to the table in comparison to Frank Costa, isn't it? That he has speed and that agility. Speed and quickness of foot, the, the ability to make something happen on your own. Shipman remains the lone setback on second down, needing two, following number eight gain of eight. And Shipman will take it on the drive. He runs through a gaping hole. Here comes that fourth quarter speed to midfield. A flag down. 
And Norris Mosley pulled him down. Did he touch the face man? John Smith tells us he did. Face mask the call. Al Shipman is just a uh, exciting little back with a lot of power and, and speed, and it's nothing but a draw. You see Ryan Collins coming back, and all he wants to do is get it to him as deep as he can and give him room to pick his hole. And here he loses his footing, but then just, I mean, this guy just has unbelievable ability, but <laughs> Mosley says, no way. Here you see the hand as it goes across the face mask, but it's only a five-yard penalty because he takes his hands off. An inadvertent contact turns a 16-yard rush into a net exchange of 21. Leading 17 to 12. Collins, look out, sacked back across midfield. Dropped on the play by Terrell Green, or rather Humphrey. Roderick Humphrey. Here you see him. He got a free blitzer. You know, this is what every linebacker dreams about. Quarterback never saw him coming. And, you know, that's a mistake on Ryan Collins' part. He's got to know that he's unprotected to his right side. A redshirt freshman from Tulsa, Oklahoma, playing behind Jason Chavis. Has a huge play in this game. And the loss is of eight. Five out in the pattern on second down and needing 18 from the gun. Again the heat, again Collins dances. He unloads and it's caught close to the first down Barkey. At the 34 yard line, A.C. Tellison. Here you see the poison experience of Ryan Collins. You know, earlier we see him come out of the pocket. Here he knows he needs 18 yards. He just finds some room. He steps up and instead of running with the football, he tries to find the open receiver. He sees A.C. Tellison and guns it in there for completion. It's only the second time today, Matt, Tellison has put his hands on the football, but it's very important to Miami. Well, I think this is where you see the young quarterback coming of age, having the, the no win as to when to run with it, and here we got the blitz coming again. Panthers on the prowl. Collins taken down, sacked again on third down, and out of field goal range as well, and it will be a punting situation. In the second half, facing third down situations, Miami has failed to convert in five separate opportunities. Miami has just not done a good job of picking up the blitz. You know, you, you see Pitt, they're running up in there. They're showing you blitz is coming. But for some reason, Miami has not been able to check the protection to block it. And there you see, Ryan's not able to get outside to try and save the play. It's beginning to rain again. Pruitt and Hunt. Mosley calls for the fair catch. The ball goes into the end zone. So let the fate show that Pitt, with seven minutes and 43 seconds to go, will have one more opportunity for certain to go the length of the field and upset Miami. They've gotten their shot. And if you would have told Johnny Majors that we will give you this situation, oh, yeah, he's smiling right now as he talks to a former Miami High school phenom Pete Gonzalez, the third string quarterback, number 10. Well, this is what they were looking for, Paul, when they were drawing up the game plan to get into the fourth quarter with a chance to win. And they've got the ball with seven minutes, 43 seconds, and an opportunity to pull a big one out. It is raining, the wind blowing, the elements against Pitt. And here comes West, protecting the ball with both hands. West gains seven on a tired pair of legs. They must be made out of steel the way West has worked in this football game. But that Miami defense has got to be getting tired as well, Paul. They've been on the field for a long time. Offensively, Miami has not been able to control the ball and put points on the board. And, you know, you see Pitt coming out with a little spark and the Miami defense sort of dragging around. This is an offensive line with two freshmen playing in it for Pitt. How have they been able to stay with that Miami front wall? West to get a gaping hole. West close to the 40-yard line. First down, Pitt. On a gain of 14 yards. Well, Pitt has went back to the same way they opened the ball game with just spreading them out and then running an ISO where you got the fullback on the middle linebacker. And there you see West coming through clean. And like we said earlier, no nonsense runner, north and south, getting every yard he can. 
32 carries for West in this game, 154 yards. One of the great performances this season, considering the opposition and all of college football. He's going to carry it again. A yard. Miami did a better job there getting there and stuffing the play before he got started. But, you know, they've got to get penetration into the backfield and try and get West before he gets started. That rain, harder and harder. Pitt now has used, will remind you, all three of its timeouts. That could this be critical. Although the scoreboard says they have won that, we're going to check this. I want to be right. I thought they had burned three. There are six minutes to go in this football game. Second down. On the counter, West gets a block. And West dives for it across the 45 to the 47-yard line. Got a nice block up front uh, to get him that two or three, four more yards. Once it's raining hard. Well, once again, if he doesn't lose his footing, you know, he's got a little uh, alley to go through there. You see him cut, make the cut, and he just loses his footing. Otherwise, he, he'd have had uh, the first down. Great lead blocking being applied by Vince Williams, number 30. Win or lose, and a wonderful effort by Pitt. Pitt has converted only once on third down all game. That was for the touchdown. The picked throw off. here and it's picked off. The interception by Ray Lewis. We've got Ray a flag Lewis down too, though. With a penalty marker down. Still on his feet, coming back to the center of the field. Now he laterals it. And the ball is free at the 34-yard line. I think we're going to end up with an interference, even though Ray Lewis picked the ball off. And now another flag goes down as players are shoving each other at the base of the pile. A madcap play. And now a fight and another flag. And the officials separate. The Canes and the Panthers. There is an injured player on the field. He is a pit player. An order is restored here with five minutes to go. The first flag will be the most important. Was there pass interference upfield? They're talking to Warren Sapp. That's going to be the possession of the football. Here's the first one. Defensive pass interference. You can read his lips. That will erase the turnover. That's a big call. Now, what do you have? Penalty number two is John Smith. Watches, Linus Erickson waits. So does Johnny Major. You see the Miami defense now having to go back onto the field. They have got the word. Keep smiling, dear. I'll tell you, Paul, if, if it's uh, pass interference on that uh, interception, you know, the it's kind of hard to see the official make that call, especially when Ray Lewis stepped in front of the intended defender to pick it off. And after that, we had a dead ball, personal foul against Miami. Dead ball, personal foul against the blue and gold. They offset. And we go back to the original spot. Let's take a look at this here because, you know, this is a very crucial call at this point in the ball game. Now, they call interference, but uh, Ray Lewis had stepped in where, you know, the timing on that with uh, C.J. Richardson was off because the linebacker stepped in and picked the ball off. Maurice uh, Washington looked to be the intended receiver on the play. And all of this didn't matter. You had the pushing and shoving afterwards. And, uh, well, a race, the interception, what was a huge play by Riley. The pass interference will stand. It'll be a first down for Pitt. Pitt will have a first down. Oh, we have a, one more personal foul offsetting. 
And it's raining as hard as it has at any point this evening here in Miami. Pitt with a reprieve. And 5.03 to go. That was a big penalty. Probably the biggest one of the game yet. Without a doubt. Without a doubt, Matt. Miami has really hurt themselves today with turnovers and penalties. Crucial points in the ball game. That has allowed Penn an opportunity to win this ball game. At this stage of things, with the rain coming down as it is, Pitt has to keep the ball on the ground, protecting the football. Chris Patton. Chris Patton. Down to the 41 yard line, and the clock ticks. If you are a Panther, you want to take every second off that clock and score. A touchdown would make it 18 17. Johnny Majors wouldn't even have to kick it. Maybe. Got to get that hood fixed, Coach. Uh, just the heck with it. Second down. Fumble. Ryan gets it back. A poor exchange. Cost him a down. Cost him four yards. Much like the delay of game calls. Every time they get close, something happens. Get close on a big play, and that's what this bad weather or the inclement weather will do to you is that makes it very difficult to handle the quarterback center exchange. But uh, Ryan did a good job. Uh, John Ryan did a good job of staying with the football and making sure that he didn't bobble it and let it get away. You know, go down, take the sack, but maintain possession of the football. They're going to have to throw now, despite the elements. Third and seven. The ball right on the chalk at the 45. With a wet football Ryan. Throws. It's caught, but shy of the first down. Yet stripping a tackle is Askew. And Askew's ahead for a gain of two or three. An obvious four down territory. Askew, when he bounced off that initial hit, he went, oh my, hold your breath. He might get outside. Yeah, it looked like he had some room, but you saw the, the great speed of the Hurricane defense as they just started to close in and wouldn't allow him to get around the, co the corner. That swarming defense, good job of getting rid of the football. There's the hit by James Burgess. But now Askew breaks loose, and you think he has room, but look at that Hurricane yeah, defense. Greg McMacken's troops reacted quickly. Officially, we are told, Pitt has one timeout remaining. There's a pause. We'll step aside to 323 away from the finish line and available for four minutes. The world of Makita design. Innovative. Always a leader. So how do you make the best even better? Throw away the key. Makita. It's all the power you need. For a limited time, receive a free extra battery with your Makita purchase. It's been time again, and Don Shula's ready to take Miami into the highlight zone. So get ready, because Sunshine Network's going to take you along for the ride. Jay Randolph. Join Kerry Ross next Monday. Troy Vincent and James Saxon will be here to take your phone calls. All the best plays from the huddle to the hits. The game within the game. Brought to you live each week. The Miami Dolphins Monday Night Magazine. 7 p.m. on Sunshine. This is the sound of a smoke detector. It has saved thousands of lives. This is another alarm, an alert to a senseless intruder, one that kills hundreds of people in their homes each year, carbon monoxide. Since carbon monoxide is colorless and odorless, you can't detect it. The poisonous gas can leak from improperly maintained fuel-burning appliances like furnaces and room heaters, from a block chimney, or from a car or charcoal grill used in an attached garage. As a first line of defense, consumers should have their home heating systems and all their appliances inspected by a professional each year to make sure they're operating properly. Second line of defense, we recommend that consumers purchase the new carbon monoxide detectors that meet this new UL standard. 
Before we go any further, a salute to our camera crew who has worked in this game in some rather adverse conditions and done such an outstanding job hanging in there to bring this game to you. It all comes down to this. One final shot for Johnny Major. And perhaps the upset of the year. 17-12, fourth and four. Pitts coming with that uh, five wide once again. See if they can confuse Miami again. And here we go. Ryan throws. It's caught. Where do they spot the ball? The spot will give him a first down. Got Panthers. the first down. Billy Davis. Billy Davis holds on. First down. Pitt. This is what you want if you want to design a play that you got to have. You want to get your best receiver against the linebacker, and that's just great play design by the Pitt offensive staff. The last time a running back rushed for more than 150 yards against the Canes, Marshall Falk in 91 for San Diego State. This has been a performance of historic proportions. It is Williams rather than West on this carry. Bulldogging his way inside the 35 and inside two and a half minutes to play. Ryan on a wet field. 9 of 14, 60 yards. And an injured Kane again. A little while ago, Miami's talented Earl Little. The safety had to be helped off the field. Temple, don't mention Sunshine. And Patrick Riley now, the outstanding defensive lineman. Injured. That gives us a moment to tell you that Miami and Temple is on pay-per-view next week in the Big East. Catch all the action as the Canes travel north to the vet Veteran Stadium to take on Temple. Check your local cable system to order. You know, we opened, we opened the program talking about Miami being in control of their own destiny, and you know, they're in a position right now where uh, they are looking at not only getting to getting by with a squeaker, but possibly losing a ball game that could hurt them in the ranking. It has been just a most peculiar day for the premier teams in college football. Penn State narrowly escaping Illinois. And now horror of horror, the great Riley to the sideline. This is a man regarded by many as a first round draft pick, the senior. Well, the tough thing about today, even if Miami gets out of here with a with a victory, you know they have lost quite a few players today to injury, and you know that could hurt them uh, in the weeks to come against Temple and uh, Boston College. So you know, let's see how the defense fares for this last two minutes and uh, 22 seconds. Riley had to leave the game. Marvin Davis takes his place. Mm -hmm. 93, the sophomore at 260. Second and eight. At the 33, pit trailing, 17 to 12, two minutes to go, as you see, as the ball is snapped. And a flag. The play is stopped with 2.02 to play. And it may be against Miami this time. It was thrown along the line of scrimmage. And the call, dead ball. Illegal procedure. No pit. Against the Pitt Panthers. They have continued to make critical mistakes. Here's Joe. Sideline Mike, Larry. Go, Joe. Earl Little's uh, injury on the sideline. The safety has a sprained knee. They don't think it's too bad. They think he'll be okay after this game. Back up to you. It's good news, Joe. What Pitt has done if they stay true to form here is now will hit a big play. Set. The throw, the catch, inside the 35, down to the 31-yard line yeah. for Dietrich Jones. Paul, you need to go to spare headset, please. You're crapping up. The, the pit receivers and running backs are just doing such a fantastic job of avoiding tackles after the catch. You know, the Hurricanes have defenders around them, but the first guy is not being able to bring them down. So, you know, you got to give Pitt some credit. You know, they're hanging in there. Pitt continues to drive the football. 1.15 to play. Third down. Ryan. Over the middle. Incomplete. Askew the intended target. Broken up by Chad Wilson. 
The throw was behind him. He appeared to have position to ask you on Wilson when the pass was released. Yeah, they keep trying to throw a little curl right there, and uh, Chad Wilson's just doing a great job of breaking on the football. Ball's a little bit behind him, but, uh, you know, he'd have been in position to make the play either way. 1-0-3. Fourth down, another big play coming up. This is the ball game right here. And Miami holds. Five receivers into the pattern. The blitz coming. Ryan throws the middle screen, and it's incomplete. Incomplete, and Miami will take over. Richardson, the reigning defensive player in the wake in the Big East, was in the vicinity. The ball perhaps slipped, underthrown. Miami has held on with 59 seconds remaining. But, Paul, they had to play there. You had both receivers from the slot break in there together. There was some confusion. If we go back and look at the play, as you see Ryan goes back, John Ryan goes back to throw the football, you got two receivers there together. They had to play. It was available, and they could have picked up the first down, but miscommunication by the pit team. Irregardless, John Ryan... Deserves no pity, only praise today. I don't know that Dennis Erickson misjudged what would happen today, but Johnny Majors has shot the 50,000 plus here with the way his ball club has performed. Well, you expect to see the pit team put up some points and, and, and et cetera, but you also expect to see the pit defense give up some points and today turn into a defensive struggle. Let's give the pit football team a lot of credit Absolutely. for making things happen, but also let's call it like it is. Miami came in here, they were flat, they were not ready to play, and they were thinking about homecoming. Well, the old warrior had another gallant stand today, and for Miami, the Canes record should improve to 8-1, and 5-0 and oh in the Big East. Pitt will slip to 2-8, and 1-5 and in conference play. There is Provided, the, of course, they could uh, run out the clock without a turnover. Well, at this point, you just take the football, you fall down. You know, Pitt has, Pitt has one timeout left, and you could run the clock out, so... For Miami next week, as we told you earlier, we'll find him in the vet. And Boston College, to wrap it out, Dan Hitting's club lost its first two and has been on a tear since. One of the more improved teams in the latter part of this season. They blasted, embarrassed Syracuse earlier today. Well, Dan Henning is one of the bright offensive minds in, in, in football, not just in college football, but he's been, he's been around the pros just to be a receiver coach for the Dolphins. He knows how to put a team together, and, and uh, he's done a good job with the Boston College program. Ryan Collins, sure-handed as he can be. Down on one knee, and the clock runs. And uh, that took but uh, one, two seconds now as uh, Pitt has used its final timeout. Timeout Pittsburgh with 55 ticks of the clock remaining. You know, the, uh, the one thing that I, 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 I really don't like, if you're going to fall down on the football, the only thing that can hurt you, Paul, is an errant snap where you lose possession of the football and the ball pops up in the air and you take your two wide receivers and you spread them out. You know, you're not going to throw the football. You're not fooling anybody. You might as well drop them back in a safety valve in case something goes wrong. So I'd like to see Miami maybe change that philosophy. Because You're saying put the receivers around the center and quarterback so if the ball right. comes that's, out, that's right. you'll we'll have a fumble drill. I, I guarantee you're not going to throw a bomb with uh, 55 seconds to go. No, not today. And I don't believe that the weather had much to do with the way Pitt was able to hung in there. I think they did it with tactics and with character today. They, uh, they came in with a sound game yep. plan. They executed well, and they forced Miami to beat them. They didn't come in and give Miami the game the way they've been doing all year. They're 2-7 and seven because during the course of the year, they gave the game away. They, they were giving up close to 30 points a game and only scoring 20 themselves. You can't win that way. Johnny Majors has a performance that he can point to as concrete signs. Uh, <laughs> you took a deep breath there on that snap, didn't you? I see Dennis was listening. He, yeah. he heard our prayer. You know, he brought the receivers back in and got them back there where if anything goes wrong, 
Well, Johnny Majors has something he can point to, and Dennis Erickson can say yes, or perhaps the emotional edge may not have been there, but we won nonetheless. For Majors in his second go-around in his 27th season of college coaching, he has but one game remaining, and that will come next week as he closes it out against Rutgers. That'll do it, provided the uh, clock will start rolling again. We have a penalty marker down. That microphone has not worked throughout the afternoon. The offside against Pittsburgh. Ryan Collins threw for 258 yards, but he also chucked two interceptions in this game and was relieved in the third quarter by Collins. Uh, Costa was rather than Collins. And but Collins wasn't able truly to provide that spark. Uh, the Canes have been shut out in the second half by Pitt. Well, I, I, the Miami offense has been flat all day. You take away that, that explosive two minutes of the end of the half, and Miami offensively really haven't done anything good. The final seconds tick away in what was an outstanding football game. We hope you enjoyed it. Our post-game chat with Dennis Erickson. That on the field just ahead from the Orange Bowl in Miami. Fluids and juices. Whoa, oh, 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 that's scary stuff. And it's opening soon. It's the extraterrestrial alien encounter here at Disney World. Well, there's excitement here, but what are you doing on this channel? The big excitement is going on over at the Free Preview Channel. Great channels, three channels of HBO, two of Cinemax, and the Disney Channel. But guess what? This is your last night. You've got to stop over right now. Check it out. And wait till you hear about the offer. Don't sit there. Come on, right now. I've been going to Rutland's for 30 years, ever since I came to Orlando. In fact, I started practicing in the Rutland building, and I'd run down and say hello to Mr. Rutland and save my money and buy a tie or a suit. It's been a long time, very, very satisfactory time. Uh, you know, for some young professional that, that uh, appreciates that appearance is important, uh, there's really no better place to guarantee proper fit and style, I think, than Rutland's. So I'd say check it out. some sports this November? Well, cobble up some NBA action with the Orlando Magic and Miami Heat as they fill up the Nets. Then, feast your eyes on women's action as they dish it out with the women's NIT. Ready for dessert? Well, spoon down some hurricane action as they eat up opponents on the gridiron and the hard courts. Still hungry? We'll pile up a plate of sports this November on Sunshine. Miami is one, and here's Joe with Dennis Erickson. We're with Coach Erickson, and Coach, 17-12 uh, win. you got to be happy to get out of here with a win today. No question about it, Joe. We played awful, and uh, we weren't emotionally ready to play. That's my fault, and uh, very disappointed with our play. And uh, you got to give Pitch Pittsburgh credit. Uh, we had a chance to put it away a number of times in the second half and never could get it in the end zone. We struggled offensively. Up front, every place. We didn't play very well defensively. We played well enough to win at the end, and uh, a win's a win. But obviously, we need to look at it and see what the heck happened because uh, we've got Temple and we've got Boston College. And if uh, we want to be as good as we sometimes we think we are, maybe we aren't sometimes, then we better evaluate some things. All right, thanks, Coach. Okay, Thank Joe. you very much. Coach Dennis Erickson joined us. Back up to you. Yeah, he really wasn't in a mood to talk, but uh, did come over and chat with Joe. 17-12, your final. Miami wins its eighth game of the season, but it was a fight with the Panthers the entire way. Bowl, which was framed by more than 50,000 fans this evening at homecoming, sees the Canes prevail in a nail-biter, 17 to 12. Our thanks to the athletic director at the University of Miami, a Paul D, to John Hahn, the sports information director, Oval James, the AD at Pitt, has a lot to be proud of, and our thanks to Ron Wall for all of his help. But next Saturday, the Canes and the Owls on pay-per-view. Miami Nat has a lot of work to get ready for that game. Well, Miami. 
Miami has to get ready for next week, but uh, they've got to get ready for Boston College. The, the, the game this week, they didn't play well. It's homecoming. They, they really can't take teams lightly. Hopefully they won't go up and take Temple lightly next week. And they got to start taking care of their own as far as the standings go. And no one is going to take Pitt lightly from here on in. Majors may have them turned. The Fort Nat Moore for Joe Rose. So for Jeff DeMoss, Tom Hastings, and our entire Sunshine team, and that includes Michelle Watson, our stage manager, I'm Paul Kennedy. From the Orange Bowl in Miami, go Canes. They beat Pitt 17-12. to